Translator, Transan Editor, Transan. The Prince of Ken Kingdom had been bought over by the Golden Rock Fort, and this immediately created a huge advantage for Shangguan Fei. Now that he had eight votes, even without the three unknown voters who could swing either way, he would still have five confirmed votes. He only needed one more confirmed vote to end up with at least a tie, two more, and he would surely be the prince consort. On the other hand, the prince of Lulan Kingdom only had seven votes with three voters who could possibly swing to Shangguan Fei. Unless the prince could ensure that all three undecided votes were cast on him, he could not win the contest. As the contest raged on, the small courier station became a marketplace festered with conspiracies. It was so tense that even a very ordinary look from a very ordinary slave could spark off a series of conflicts and suspicions. On the last day before the voting, two of the swing voters were revealed. They were the sons of different tribal chiefs. Even though they were simple-minded, they were not foolish. They were waiting for their market value to shoot up, the Prince of Ken Kingdom was a good example. If they could not win over the hand of the princess, they would at least have carved out a sufficient chunk of money from the two big nations. The Prince of Lulan Kingdom and the special emissary from the Central Plain found themselves pressed into a corner and worked hard to win more votes. Since the Golden Rock Fort had spent a significant sum of money bribing the Prince of Ken Kingdom, after half a day of bargaining, each side managed to win a vote respectively from a previously undecided voter. The vote count was now Shangguan phase 7 to the Prince of Lulan Kingdom 6. There was one remaining swing vote, and it belonged to someone who was yet to reveal himself. His choice would determine whether the Golden Rock Fort would win the contest or both sides would end up with a tie. If it were the latter, the contest would have to go on. Ji Yushinwei continued to double-cross both sides but he knew that he could not keep his act up for long, both Norland and the Central Plain were doubling up their efforts in interrogating each voter, and it would only be a few hours before he would be revealed as the remaining voter who could swing either way. There was not much time left for him to act, therefore, he was the busiest person for the rest of that day. The first person he went to visit was Shangguan Fei. Ji Yushin Wei decided that he would reveal some very important truths to the ninth young master. Rumor has it that I plan to slaughter everyone from the Golden Rock Fort, he said, giving Shangguan Fei a shock the moment they met. That, that's just a rumor. Of course, you would not move against us, especially me. He he, everyone has seen that we're as close as brothers. Your thinking is too naive. Others can claim that it's just a front I'm putting up to create an alibi for the impending murders. Of course, Shangguan Fei knew about this train of thought. He had passed on the entire responsibility of garnering votes to his attendants and the special envoy from Norland and had spent the past few days worrying about this rumor. What did you hear about, Dragon King? he asked. Ji Yushinwei stared at Shangguan Fei and replied only after thinking for a while. If I hadn't been dragged into this conspiracy, I would definitely not tell you about it. Shangguan Fei's voice trembled as he spoke. I understand. Even if we're enemies, there are times when we're in the same boat together. We are in such a situation now. Ji Yushin Wei nodded sternly as he replied, The special emissary from the Central Plain wants to murder you and put the blame on me. The time he will act is tomorrow night. Shangguan Fei was really surprised now. He had believed that he knew the entire conspiracy inside out, but the Dragon King's words had caught him unaware. This isn't possible, the central plane. Ji Yushin Wei cut him off harshly, speaking in a tone that did not allow any questioning. He wanted to forcibly implant the truth into Shangguan Fei's mind. You've said it that enemies can be in the same boat together at times. The Central Plain has struck a deal with the Supreme King to make Shangguan and you his heir apparent. With this, the Supreme King no longer needs you and Shangguan Hong, and the Central Plain no longer requires the assistance of the Great Snow Mountain. Murdering both of you and planting the blame on me is a splendid idea which will kill two birds with one stone. Eighth Brother? 
Father wants eighth brother to, at first, Shang Guan Fei still refused to believe the Dragon King, but as he spoke, he began recollecting more and more signs that validate Ji Yu Shenwei's theory. You're right, eighth sister-in-law has been very active and acting very arrogantly these few days, she must know something. However, how could eighth brother let her off when he's back in the castle? She had done that with father. Everything is about benefits now. Since Shangguan Enyu needs Luo Ningcha to convey messages to the Supreme King, naturally he must have made plenty of promises to her. Shangguan Fei believed at least 70 to 80 percent of what Ji Yu Shenwei said, as he had guessed that his father wanted to kill him a long time ago. Ha! He laughed dryly and nervously. This is the Shangguan family for you. Brothers fighting each other, and a father and his sons trying to kill each other. I still thought that mother would be able to convince him. Lady Meng's influence on the Supreme King is no longer the same as it was before, Ji Yu Shenwei pointed the cruel fact out, seemingly very knowledgeable of the happenings in the stone castle. Shangguan Fei's face had grown pasty white. He sat in stunned silence for a while before replying, if that's the case, no matter how close the both of us seem to be in public, F.A. The Supreme King and the Central Plain still wish to move against me. Ji Yu Shenwei nodded his head. How did you come to know about the entire matter in such great detail, Dragon King, asked Shang Guan Fei cautiously. When dealing with the Dragon King, he was still extremely distrustful. Someone close to the Central Plain's special emissary has leaked a secret to me, the emissary has detailed ten top kung fu experts from the Central Plains and has mixed them amongst the fifty guards he brought along. Think about it, are they hiding their identities just to protect the special emissary from the shadows? He represents the Central Plains, do you think anyone would dare to lay a hand on him? Shang Guan Fei rubbed his sweaty palm against the armrest of his chair, biting his lip. Suddenly, he lifted his head to speak after a long pause. You already have a solution, haven't you, Dragon King? The expression in his eyes was more of pleading rather than hoping. Ji Yu Shenwei nodded slowly. It was the crucial moment to convince Shang Guan Fei, and he could not allow any flaw to be exposed. But, I need your help. This is another reason why I chose to tell you the truth. There was a loud slapping sound as Shang Guan Fei smacked his palm on the armrest. He had used too much force and literally smashed half of the chair into pieces. He got up quickly and laughed awkwardly, replying, Please speak, Dragon King. Since we're already on the same boat, I'll definitely do my best to help. Ji Yu Shenwei did not reply immediately. He stood up as well and paced to and fro for a while, considering the issue at hand comprehensively. At the moment, the most pressing danger to us is the ten kung fu experts with the special emissary from the Central Plains. They'll act latest by tomorrow night, and we have to strike before they do. We have to get rid of them tonight. Tonight? Kill them in the courier station? Is, isn't that declaring war with the Central Plains, Shang Guan Fei said. He had wanted to sit down, but the chair was already tilted to one side he could only support himself on the table and had to forcibly keep his legs upright. Of course, we cannot make our move in the courier station. Ji Yu Shenwei's voice was becoming firmer and his tone was beginning to sound like an order, he wanted to leave Shang Guan Fei with no choice. I have people by the special emissary of the Central Plains. He'll flee from the courier station tonight and try to escape into the palace. If I didn't guess wrong, Many of the ten kung fu experts will be after him. When that time comes. Shang Guan Fei was enlightened. Splendid plan, Dragon King. If the kung fu masters from the Central Plains get killed in the Royal Palace of Stone Kingdom, no one can trace it back to us. The special emissary might even refuse to admit that they were his men. I need your men to set up the trap. Dragon King. Can you not move on your own? Shang Guan Fei suggested, a crafty look on his face. He was more than willing to not be involved in the entire matter. No, 
I've brought too few men with me and I can't kill so many Kung Fu masters by myself. Besides, I don't wish to openly break off relations with the Central Plains yet. It has to be your men, your best killers, your most trusted subordinates. Ji Yushenwei's tone had become extremely harsh, implicitly signifying that he was reprimanding and unhappy with Shangguan Fei. The latter trembled slightly as he replied, I can send out twenty men. They were detailed by my mother and should be loyal to me. Very good. Ji Yushenwei gave detailed information on the specific time the mission would be executed as well as the location of the ambush. Shang Fei was extremely smart and could commit everything to memory after only hearing it once. However, there was something important that he was worried about. Getting rid of the Kung Fu experts will only stall the inevitable for a while. Since my father, the Supreme King has decided to kill me and put the blame on you, Dragon King, I fear he won't give up so easily. His intention is but to blame me for breaking the ceasefire agreement. It's very simple, after the princess has been engaged, the Great Snow Mountain will very quickly declare war once more against the Golden Rock Fort. At that time, he'll no longer require any more excuses. Shangguan Fei heaved a sigh of relief. He was enemies with the Dragon King, but could only confess his innermost feelings to him. I don't understand, father clearly likes me and my sister. Even though mother is not as favored by him as before, she has always wielded authority. Why does he want to act so ruthlessly? Even if he wants to put the blame on you, he doesn't have to kill me, he could have chosen any killer or even someone else, Shangguan Hong, for example. The Supreme King surely has his reason, Ji Yu Shenwei replied. He knew exactly what that reason was, but he did not want to tell Shangguan Fei at the moment. Shangguan Fei sighed dejectedly. Earlier when he had embarked on the journey to the Stone Kingdom, he had deduced that his father wanted him dead from various hints given by his mother and many small signs that he spotted. Even though he had come up with many plans to tackle the assassination, there was something that he could never figure out, how could his father be so ruthless? Could it be because I was too weak all these years? Shangguan Fei thought indignantly. He was full of loathing for the title of son of the Supreme King and had to forcibly compose himself. He replied, I'll detail the killers. Please stay a while, Dragon King. My sister wishes to see you. Ji Yu Shenwei was preparing to leave, he had many things to see to. However, he paused for a moment and surprisingly replied, yes. Shangguan Ayu put on an expressionless face and did not speak for quite a while. Ji Yu Shenwei wanted to ask her if she knew that she was one of the sacrificial lambs chosen by the Supreme King, but managed to control his urge to do so. You wish to see me, he asked. Right, Shangguan Ayu said. She pursed her lips together as she looked at the chair smashed into half by her brother. I. Can you tell me something truthfully? What thing is it? What are you and Shangguan Fei getting at? He has an illusion that father wishes to kill him. You're making use of this against him, aren't you? Make use of him, laughed Ji Yu Shenwei coldly. It's not that you've not seen his smarts before. It's not even clear who is making use of who in our relationship. Shangguan Ayu looked at Ji Yu Shenwei her jet black pupils turning from an expression of coldness to tenderness. For seasons seemed to flash past in her eyes, and each left an indelible impression in Ji Yu Shenwei. Haven't you thought of? No, Ji Yu Shenwei interrupted harshly. He thought that he was ruthless, but he was unprepared to reply to her question. I want to fight till the end and kill all of my enemies. Besides, I want to be the prince consort of the Stone Kingdom, he continued. Ji Yu Shenwei stormed out of the room, the thawing chill of winter blowing across his face. His heart was filled with brutal pride, he was no longer Slave Huan, and she was no longer the tenth young master. The killing was coming and he did not allow himself a single shred of doubt. Only the heavens knew that he was torturing himself as he tormented her as well. 
Translator, Transan Editor, Transan. It was a night without peace. Every group was either busy trying to garner support for themselves or incite discourse between the other factions. As soon as Ji Yu Shenwei left Shangguan Fei's reception hall, he traveled to the courier station and disappeared for nearly four hours. During that time, several groups of people had come seeking an audience with Dragon King one after another, however, they were all rejected by Lin Xiaoshan. Dragon King is not here. I will report to him as soon as he comes back, he told them. Before Dragon King reappeared, there was a slight commotion at the courier station. Since it lasted for only a short while and did not affect many, only a few people had noticed it. Shortly after nightfall, about an hour after Dragon King disappeared, the assistant from the central plane, Chong Hong, walked out of the courier station alone and empty-handed. He nodded his head at the doorman, looking as if he was going out for a stroll. However, being away from Stone Kingdom's capital, the courier station offered nothing for recreation in the winter. The assistant's behavior looked somewhat strange. Soon, the news reached the special emissary from the central plain, Lindell, and he immediately realized that something was wrong. As a result, he sent people to search the assistant's room. As he expected, Chong Hung's weapon and silver were left behind, but all the documents he had kept were gone. Lin Dao realized that Lord Wei Song's secret had been leaked. He dispatched eight Kung Fu masters to track down Chong Hung, saying, Cut off his head and bring it to me. Lin Dao sat in his room, his head bowed as he pondered over the details of the past few days. He became more and more suspicious of Dragon King. From Lin Dao's point of view, Dragon King was still a naive young man with merely good kung fu. He felt that Dragon King and his swordsmen from the Great Snow Mountain were just a mob and would only be useful as a pawn, however, they did not deserve to become allies with the Central Plain. Two hours later, one of the kung fu masters brought back some news, Shong Hung was hiding in Ningjue Temple situated beside the royal palace. Instead of taking action immediately, the masters returned to seek instructions from the special envoy. Lin Dao snorted. A small country like the Stone Kingdom could not possibly protect a fugitive who the commanding officer of the western region wanted to kill. Be quiet and do not alarm the eminent monks of the Four Truths Temple, he ordered. The Kung Fu master left with his instructions. Lin Dao was still preoccupied with the Dragon King. What was he thinking? disappearing at this point. Was the pale, young man hiding any conspiracy? About an hour later, Lin Dao's doubts were answered, Dragon King reappeared at the courier station. The first thing he did was visit the special emissary from the central plain. You're really busy, Dragon King, Lin Dao chuckled, feeling relieved. The young man was not with Xiong Hong, which meant there was no collusion between the two of them. I sent people to invite you over several times but couldn't get you to come. I beg your pardon, your honor. There were still several bandits remaining in the desert and I heard that they were sneaking around and spying, so I went out to get rid of them. What foolish bandits! How dare they challenge Dragon King! Lin Dao rebuked sternly. He actually meant what he said. It was the idea of another confidant of Wei Song to hire bandits to intercept and kill Dragon King, and Lin Dao had disagreed from the very beginning. He believed that they should not kill Dragon King before milking the young man for all his worth, there was still value in him. Dragon King's value, however, would only last for one more day. After he voted and the Emperor's son in law was selected, it would be time for him to disappear forever. Ah! Uh, Dragon King, the reason why I invited you here is that I've heard a rumor that you are double-crossing both parties in this voting contest, that you've promised to vote for Shangguan Fei and the Prince of the Lulang Kingdom at the same time. Ha ha, I don't believe it, but gossip is a terrible thing. The rumor is true. Lin Xia was astonished. He knew that Dragon King was the last swing voter whose identity had not been revealed but he did not expect that the youth would admit to it in such a straightforward manner. Thus, he frowned as he questioned Dragon King, 
I am confused. Could you elaborate? Firstly, please forgive my actions. I did not discuss anything with you before doing this because I have to keep the entire plan confidential. As long as you have legitimate reasons to act in this manner, Dragon King, Lin Dao said, looking amiable, however, he did not want to commit to anything yet. I did this to win Shangguan Fei's trust as I know that Golden Rock Fort is plotting a conspiracy which has something to do with your life. Lin Dao raised his eyebrows, surprised. Could it be that Shangguan Fei actually dares to kill me? To Lin Dao's surprise, Dragon King nodded solemnly. Shangguan Fei is cowardly and incompetent, one who treasures his life. The only task Supreme King had given to him was to marry the princess at all costs. If he failed, he would lose his life. What, what does this have to do with me? Shangguan Fei has already deduced that my promise to vote for him was a lie. If that's the case, he will have only six votes, just like the Prince of Lulan Kingdom, and it will result in another competition round after tomorrow, however, he doesn't have the confidence or patience to wait for the next segment and try to win it, so he decided to throw caution to the wind and assassinate you. If you die, the Prince of the Lulan Kingdom would lose his support, and the tickets that belong to him would naturally go to Shangguan Fei. Is this true? Lin Dao was skeptical. By doing so, Shangguan Fei would actually be declaring war on the central plain. Would he be so stupid? The Supreme King would definitely ask him to pay the price for his actions. I didn't believe it either, so I endeavored to win Shangguan Fei's trust. Just now, I received news that twenty Golden Rock killers stealthily left the courier station this afternoon and didn't come back after entering the capital. I asked Shangguan Fei about it before coming over here. He was complacent and said to me, wait and see, before dawn, everything will be reversed and the central plane will never stand in my way again. Therefore, I rushed here to protect you. Lin Dao's expression suddenly changed as he asked, Shangguan Fei sent killers to the capital. Yes, although I don't understand why he did that, I guess that it must be part of the plan to murder you, your honor. Lin Dao still couldn't believe it. For many years, the various forces in the western region had maintained a delicate balance, and if any of them dared to break the balance, it should have been a big nation like the Central Plain or Norland. This may just be a coincidence, Shangguan Fei didn't directly say that he would kill me. You may have overthought it, Dragon King, he said. I hope so, but we can't be too careful. Yes, you are right, Lin Dao chuckled twice. So, you will definitely vote for the Prince of Lulan Kingdom tomorrow, right? Of course, Shangguan Fei is incompetent. Whatever they contest for, I believe the Prince of Lulan Kingdom will be the winner. Lin Dao showed an expression of relief. They chatted for a moment, and Lin Dao declined Dragon King's request to personally act as his guard. After sending Dragon King off, he immediately sent people to the city to find out more about the situation. Ji Yushan Wei went back to his room to rest for a while. Before he slept, he said to Lin Xiaoshan, the special emissary from the Central Plain will send someone to meet me later, wake me up as soon as he arrives. Ji Yushan Wei was sure that there was no way his prediction would fail. The truth was that the special emissary from the Central Plains was even more anxious than he had imagined. Instead of sending someone to summon Dragon King, Lin Dao came over personally at around two o'clock. He wore a cape to prevent anyone from recognizing him. Dragon King, you are right, Lin Dao said emotionally as soon as he entered the room, trembling with fear. Xiong Hung betrayed the Central Plain and colluded with Golden Rock Fort. He lured several of my guard troops into Ningjua Temple in the capital and killed all of them. Shangguan Fei really moved against us. No, Shangguan Fei certainly would not dare do this alone. The special envoy of Norland must be the manipulating him behind the scenes. Ji Yushan Wei sat on the bed and held the handle of his saber without interrupting Lin Dao, 
knowing that the special envoy's fear would lead him to figure out all the causes and consequences of the actions of each party involved in the incident, there was no need to persuade him. Shangguan Fei is going to strike soon and the killer could very possibly be hiding outside this house and war could be triggered at any time. You have to protect me, Dragon King. From now on, this isn't about the feud between Great Snow Mountain and Golden Rock Fort anymore, but about the war between the Central Plain and Norland. It was time for Ji Yu Wei to pretend to be confused. How did the special envoy of Norland get involved? I thought it was just Shangguan Fei's idea. Alas, you think too simply. Lin Dao was anxious and had cast away his superficial respect for Dragon King, and his tone was as if he were talking to an ordinary little boy, however, he immediately realized that his life laid in the hands of Dragon King and he immediately changed his tone. There's something that you don't know about, Dragon King, the Khan of Norland is bedridden and could pass away at any time. It's very possible that he wishes to start a war before he dies and seize control of the entire western region once and for all. Ji Yu Shenwei pretended to be enlightened. Now I understand. You can rest assured that as long as I am here, I will ensure your safety, your honor, he said. However, Lin Dao could not be at ease. Currently, Dragon King was still unaware of the secret order of Mr. Wei but the special envoy would need to watch out for him the most if it were ever leaked to the young man. It would be great to be protected by you, Dragon King, but there are too many killers from Golden Rock Fort, and there would be many casualties on your side in the event of a fight. I do have a plan, however, to resolve the crisis without the use of force. I'd like to know about your plan. I am the target of Norland and Shangguan Fei. If I am not here, naturally they will not take any action. As long as I return to the residence of the commanding officer, they would not dare to act rashly with an army at my command. Ji Yu Shenwei did not expect that things would go so smoothly, Lin Dao's train of thought was almost identical to his own plan. I understand what you mean. Let me escort you to the residence of commanding officer right now, your honor, he said. No, no, we would be letting Shangguan Fei off too easily. I have an idea, and I would like to seek your opinion about it, Dragon King. Pray tell, your honor. We from the Great Snow Mountain would gladly serve the Central Plain. My idea is for you to stay in Stone Kingdom and do your best to help the Prince of Lulan Kingdom to become the Emperor's son-in-law, Dragon King. You can also take some extreme measures if necessary. Also, you needn't worry about the armistice agreement, the central plane will bear responsibility for your actions. Ji Yu Shenwei sneered in his heart. Even before leaving, Lin Dao was setting him up, the special envoy was hoping that the Great Snow Mountain and Golden Rock Fort would fight each other so that he would have two weakened adversaries to deal with in the future. The Great Snow Mountain has nothing to fear as long as we have the central plane support. I will never let Shangguan Fei be the emperor's son-in-law. Ji Yu Shenwei said, a slight hint of murderous intent showing in his eyes, causing Lin Dao to be both afraid and relieved. Ji Yu Shenwei escorted Lin Dao as they left the courier station secretly, the two remaining Kung Fu masters of the special envoy's guard troops following behind. Along the way, Lin Dao had been encouraging Dragon King to do his best, as he even overtly implied that he should kill Shangguan Fei and the special envoy of Norland. As they went their separate ways after walking for Ten Li, Lin Dao believed that Dragon King was completely under his control. As the sun began to rise, Ji Yu Shenwei returned to the courier station. He had removed the biggest obstacle facing him, and he could carry out the last part of his plan now, obtain the throne of Stone Kingdom and control the entire Xiaoyao Lake. Chapter 343, The Draw Translator, Transan Editor, Transan. The close attendant of the special emissary from the Central Plain looked embarrassed as he publicly announced that the special envoy was suddenly caught ill and unable to get out of bed. As such, he could not meet anyone nor attend the voting that day. The illness came so coincidentally that not many people bought his excuse. 
The special envoy of Norland was secretly delighted but he did not show how he felt. He even sent people to bring medicinal soup to the special emissary so as to show his concern. Shang Guanfei was greatly relieved thinking that Dragon King's preemptive strategy had taken effect and that the special emissary from the Central Plain was no longer a deadly threat. On the other hand, the Prince of Lulan Kingdom was panicking, without the Central Plain support, he was like a baby who had lost the protection of its parents. He could hardly make a move, let alone compete for the position of the Emperor's son-in-law. Lin Dao had asked his attendant to leave a message for the Prince of the Lulan Kingdom find Dragon King, he will take charge of everything. Therefore, not long after Ji Yu Shenwei had returned to the courier station, the Prince of Lulan Kingdom came looking for him. His face was paler than the youth as he asked, Dragon King, what happened? Mr. Lin. Mr. Lin encountered an emergency and has left Stone Kingdom. The Prince of Lulan Kingdom was shocked as he asked, what shall I do then? Ji Yu Shenwei looked the prince up and down as if trying to measure his capability. This is a battle of life and death. Your highness should cheer up and try your best. A battle of life and death? Why is it so? Mr. Lin, he's not trying to run away from his obligations, is he? The handsome prince looked indignant, finally realizing that he had been abandoned by his backing. Ji Yu Shenwei did not answer the question, anyway, your highness has arrived at a point of no return. You have to face the issue head on. The prince of Lulan Kingdom shook his head, he had come to fight for the position of emperor's son-in-law at the request of the central plain. Stone Kingdom was far away from Lulan Kingdom, and even if he succeeded, it would not be of significance to the Lulan Kingdom. Therefore, he said, no, I'm going to quit. I'm going out to announce that they should just let the candidate from Golden Rock Fort be the Emperor's son-in-law. It doesn't matter to me. Ji Yu Shenwei's expression turned cold and his tone became serious. Even if you don't care, the Central Plain cares. Controlling the Stone Kingdom is an important strategy of the Central Plain. If you shirk your responsibility, not only will you get into trouble, but so will the Lulan Kingdom. The Prince of Lulan Kingdom sat down dispiritedly. It was less than two hours before the voting would begin. Indeed, he was in a dilemma. He could not help feeling vengeful towards the special emissary from the Central Plains. Golden Rock Fort had sent many killers to accompany Shang Guan Fei and Lin Dao must have escaped upon realizing that the situation did not look good for him, leaving the prince to die. Ji Yu Shenwei stood there silently while waiting for the Prince of Lulan Kingdom to realize on his own that there was only one solution available. The prince was not stupid, but he was used to living in comfort and luxury and had competent people to take care of everything. As such, he was slow to react when faced with a crisis on his own. After having thought for a long time, he raised his head and looked at the calm Dragon King, enlightened. He finally came up with a way to save his life. Fight for the position of Emperor's son-in-law, Dragon King. I will tell those involved to vote for you. You aren't afraid of Golden Rock Fort, right? Only you, you are from the Central Plain, aren't you? Dragon King, you must help me. The Prince of Lulan Kingdom was being incoherent, but his intention was relatively clear. Ji Yu Shenwei thought briefly and said, this is not good. The Prince of Lulan Kingdom almost jumped in front of Dragon King. Well, it's the best way. I will tell those involved now. Even if our plan fails, it is the special emissary from the Central Plain that should be responsible, right? He should have remained in Stone Kingdom to oversee things. Before he even finished talking, the Prince turned around and ran out. He had already made up his mind and he was going to pass the hot potato to Dragon King, no matter whether he agreed to it or not. Ji Yu Shenwei tidied up his clothes. Everything had been under his control so far, but he did not feel relaxed, there was still something in his heart that made him uncomfortable. He pondered over his plan again but could not find any obvious flaw in it. As such, 
he decided to suppress the trivial doubt and stop thinking about it. Maid Lotus came in and nodded her head at him. She had not been in the courier station for several days, during which she was out to perform another important task. You got it. Maid Lotus raised her hand and was holding a small cotton bag. It's here, so we can take action tonight. I have everything prepared, she replied. Ji Yushinwei remained deeply vigilant around her, but he had to admit that there was no one who could reassure him like Maid Lotus did. Okay, let's take action tonight, he said. Ji Yushin was getting ready to set off when Maid Lotus suddenly asked, Are you really going to marry the princess? Ji Yushin Wei gave Maid Lotus a surprised look. He had never told her his plan, but she guessed correctly. I have to. The Great Snow Mountain needs a place to accommodate its people. Ji Yushin Wei went out of the room after speaking, while Maid Lotus remained silent and expressionless. In her opinion, Dragon King's answer was irrelevant to the question, as it was not necessary to marry the princess to gain control over the Stone Kingdom. The vote was still presided over by Prime Minister Yang Do, who first expressed regret over the illness of the special emissary from the Central Plain and then thanked each suitor. It was only after he finished his lengthy talk that the voting began. To show that nobody would manipulate the votes, the voting was done publicly. Everyone who had the right to vote had to stand up and declare, of all the people, I think so and so was the best in terms of character and conduct. The King of Stone Kingdom did not show up, thus Yang Do would vote on his behalf. Most of the voters cast their votes according to their promises made to the two major factions over the past few days. The only change was that those who had originally pledged to vote for the Prince of Lulan Kingdom switched to Dragon King instead. There was no more need for Ji Yushin Wei to remain on the fence, everyone knew that he had double-crossed the Central Plain and Golden Rock Fort and that he would vote for himself at the decisive moment. As such, Dragon King and Shang Fei each won six votes, resulting in a draw. Shang Fei was relieved and even began generously congratulating Dragon King, he was willing to compete in the next round, as Yang Do had voted publicly for Shang Fei on behalf of the king. It was akin to declaring that he would almost certainly win the position of the emperor's son-in-law. The others also held the same idea. The prince of Lulan Kingdom privately expressed his thanks to Dragon King and had already calmly conceded defeat in the next round of competition. We are not to be blamed, the special emissary from the Central Plains has fled. Of course, the King of Stone Kingdom would know which side he should be on now, he said. That evening, Yang Do announced the specific agenda for the last competition. It was very simple and further convinced everyone that Shang Guan Fei was bound to be the emperor's son-in-law. At noon tomorrow, both of you shall report to the palace and the princess will choose her consort. Shang Guan Fei was already beginning to accept congratulations. Everyone knew that the princess could not go against the king's intentions. Since her brother had chosen to side with Golden Rock Fort, it was assumed that she would make the same choice. The Prince of Lulan Kingdom began packing up impatiently. He planned to retrieve the gold belonging to his nation and leave Stone Kingdom as soon as the princess had selected her consort. Even so, he did not forget to complain to Dragon King, I will tell the commanding officer of the western region what the special envoy has done. It's all his fault that things have turned out like this. Even after the competition was seemingly over, Dragon King did not show any intent to begin killing. He remained polite with the ninth young master of Golden Rock Fort just like they were friends, which made many people relieved and some a little disappointed. The Prince of Ken Kingdom seemed to be afraid that he would miss out on the commotion, and he shouted openly in the courier station, trying to stir things up. I thought that Dragon King was courageous, but it seems that he is just someone who bullies the weak and fears the strong. Ji Yushin Wei faced defeat calmly. After nightfall, he stealthily left the courier station without anyone noticing. Not far from the city gate, Maid Lotus was hiding in the bushes and waiting for him. 
They remained silent after meeting up and continued to moving forward before climbing over a high wall and sneaking into the city. In a remote house, thirty ferocious bandits were waiting for the arrival of Dragon King and made Lotus. Ji Yushinwei had disappeared for four hours last night to meet up with another group of bandits. At Maid Lotus's command, nearly 200 bandits had already entered Stone Kingdom in batches and were staying in different locations. The leader of the bandits was He San Sai, also known as the Invincible Machete of Qian Shan. He was a short, fat middle aged man who showed great respect to Dragon King, however, he was even more afraid of the woman beside him to the point that he dared not to even look at her directly. He Sansai led the way and invited Dragon King and made Lotus into an annex. There were three captives inside the room. There was blood all over the captives, they had obviously been beaten and had undergone some cruel form of interrogation. Upon seeing that someone walked into the room, they hurriedly begged for mercy. They recognized Dragon King and knelt down in front of him as they pleaded, Please forgive us, Dragon King. We'll tell you everything and dare not to conceal anything from you. Ji Yushinwei did not ask anything, he had already heard all their confessions via Maid Lotus. He came here just to see if they were the people he wanted. Yes, they are, he thought. On the very first night, they camped in the desert after setting off from Shuangchuan village. A dozen machete men dressed up as merchants had rushed into the tents of the monks from the Four Truths Temple, hoping to relieve them of a valuable object, however, in the end, they failed and retreated from the scene. The three captives belonged to the group of robbers. They had not given up and followed the monks to Stone Kingdom. They did not dare to rob them in public and could only keep watch on the monks near Ningjua Temple. Eventually, they found an opportunity to strike. A high-ranking monk in the temple had broken his monastic vows and was having an affair with a married woman in the city. He often went out for dates in the night and was caught red-handed by the machete men on such an occasion. They then forced him to steal an object from Master Fayan. The monks succumbed to the threats and could only agree to do so. After returning to the temple and observing for a few days, he finally took action in the night and stole the object before handing it over to the machete men who were waiting outside the temple. The machete men were overjoyed and did not expect to have been spied on in return. The fifteen machete men were intercepted by a group of bandits not even twenty li from the capital of Stone Kingdom. Most of them were killed and only three were captured alive. They were sent by Wild Horse, Maid Lotus said, she had already heard their confession earlier. Ji Yushinwei weighed the cotton bag in his hand as he said, we can begin talks with them now. Aren't you going to make use of it? Wild Horse had big plans for it. Ji Yushinwei shook his head, saying, my plan is exactly the opposite of his. He paused briefly before repeating what Fang Wencha had once said, sometimes, being candid is an unscrupulous act. They came to Ningjua Temple at midnight. Instead of climbing over the wall, as usual, they knocked on the door directly. It seemed that there were people watching over the temple even at midnight. As soon as the door was knocked on, someone opened it from the inside. It was not a monk who opened the door but an imperial guard with a scimitar hanging at his waist. He whispered, Please come in, Dragon King. The emperor and holy monk have been waiting for a long time. Ji Yushan Wei entered the temple as Maid Lotus faded into the night. Meanwhile, not far from Ningjua Temple, a figure ran into the royal palace and headed straight for the residence of the princess. Translator, Transan Editor, Transan for a period, he thought that he had reached the peak of his life, but all these years of being a king only seemed to have robbed him of his energy. He was utterly fatigued, both mentally and physically, and seemed to have aged several years at once. He missed the days in Jade City when he was still the exiled second prince from Stone Kingdom. Sitting on the meditation cushion, as the king listened to the low and gentle chanting of the sutra by the eminent monk, his mind had drifted thousands of miles away. He had been so naive at that time, 
thinking that he would never be subjected to despise and ridicule by people once he ascended the throne, but oh, how wrong he was. During the period that he was absent, the young family had formed a pervasive web in the Stone Kingdom, so thick that it was practically impenetrable. Lying on the web and waiting for his prey was the giant spider himself, Prime Minister Yang Do. The king was merely another insect trapped in his layers of the web. Unable to move, his only function was to attract the attention of other prey. But even so, the disaster was not over. Soon, predators more fearsome than the spider would appear and when that happened, he might not even be able to retain his hollow throne. He could only watch as the Great Jew family line, one of the royal families of the western region, come to an end in his hands. However, the reunion with Xu Yangwei had caused a surge of joy in his heart. It was as though she was a ray of sunshine, bringing forth long-lost light and piercing through the thick web wrapped around him. Taken aback by the sight of the king, Xu Yangwei would never have imagined that the second prince, who was still childlike four years ago, had turned into a dying old man. In order to produce a descendant for the Ju family, the king often summoned commoners into the palace, therefore the appearance of Xu Yangwei did not cause a stir in the palace. Xu Yanwei's sympathy spread unchecked like a flood. Disregarding the fact that the second prince had once tried to kill her, she took it upon herself to arrange his diet, inquire about his medications, and dismiss any nasty people, while slowly instilling an idea into him, the Stone Kingdom rightfully belonged to the Ju family, and should continue to belong to the Ju family even in the future. Once the timing was ripe, Xu Yangwei admitted that she had been sent by Dragon King. The king had already guessed that was the case, but he didn't mind. Since he was already surrounded by tigers and wolves, there was no harm in having another raptor around. Perhaps it could even help him break the encirclement. Last night, Zhong Hong, the assistant to the special envoy of the Central Plain, entered the palace from Ningjue Temple unexpectedly. He came with Dragon King's request for a meeting with the king. Hence, tonight, protected by his most trusted guard, the king hid from the watchman in the palace and secretly came to Ningjue Temple. Together with Master Feiyun, they waited for Dragon King to arrive. Feiyun had gained the mutual trust of both parties. As soon as he arrived in the Stone Kingdom, the eminent monk advised the king against becoming a monk. His reason was, your majesty has not yet obliterated your worldly desires. Even if you shave your head, it will not be beneficial for you. At least Feiyun's remarks proved that he was not in cahoots with Golden Rock Fort. Although Dragon King and the King had met once, they had no chance to speak to each other since there were other suitors around at that time. Dragon King is always able to do as he wished. The King spoke first, and he could not help but show a trace of envy in his tone, even when you were a slave in Golden Rock Fort, it was no exception back then. He continued. Ji Yu Wei nodded in acknowledgement to Feiyun when he arrived and sat on the other futon. He replied, this is because I know how to satisfy as many people as possible. The king laughed dryly. Indeed, the people who had conspired to kill the first prince back then had managed to get what they wanted, one inherited the throne as he wished and the other held on to his power as a prime minister. Only the guard who wielded the saber became the sacrifice in the conspiracy. I hope Dragon King can make me satisfied this time as well. Although, I have to apologize for choosing Shangguan Fei during the day. The king said. He then paused for a while before adding grudgingly, the power of the king of the Stone Kingdom lies in the hands of the prime minister now. Prime Minister Yang Do voted in the king's stead and merely reported to the results to the king without even seeking instructions in advance. Soon, the royal power will be returned to your majesty. The king had already learned a painful lesson from his previous experience with the prime minister. He knew that by seeking the help of a stronger influence, he would end up paying a huge price for it. So he asked, what rewards are you seeking, dragon king? The stone kingdom will need a prime minister and a strong army eventually. The king sighed he was unable to escape his fate of being a puppet after all. 
but these were not important. He only cared about one thing. But the king of the stone kingdom must be someone who carries the due surname. He said, There is no need for your majesty to be in such a hurry to abdicate. Take good care of yourself and nurse your body. You still have time to produce a prince. Even if it's unfortunate that you are not able to have offspring of your own, it is still up to your majesty to decide who will succeed the throne. The king felt the need to state things clearly, so he added, Dragon King should know that the Jew family is not without successors, there are still a few distant relatives around. And they are of a legitimate royal bloodline. If I am unable to get the blessings of the gods, I will still only appoint a successor among them. No matter who my sister marries, he has no right to succeed to the throne, and neither does her offspring as well. Ji Yushinwei straightened himself up and said, I am chief of the dragons and leader of the five peaks, I don't need other titles. The king thought for a long time as he knew verbal agreements like these were not binding. Even if it was written in black and white on paper, it might just end up being empty words. But he had already come so far, there was no point in stopping. After considering the next step, he said, in that case, everything will be as you wished, dragon king. The king put his palms together to salute and bowed to Master Feiyun before leaving. He would have to ask Shong Hung for more specific details after he returned to the palace. During the whole negotiation, Feiyun had remained aloof and detached from the conversation. After the king had left for quite some time, he opened his eyes and smiled. It was a smile that made him seem like he was looking at all living creatures from a god's perspective. Looking at Dragon King with his penetrating eyes, he asked, When are you planning to return the personnel file, Dragon King? Ji Yushinwei was unable to get rid of his disgust and hatred for the monk. He really wished he could resolve his differences with the monk with a saber, but he said, The monk has met some people with ill intentions and your things were stolen. I happened to bump into them coincidentally and managed to snatch it from them. The smile on Feiyun's face disappeared. After lowering his eyes and reciting a few words of the sutra, he asked, how many people were killed? Twelve. Three survived, but probably not for long. And how many people do you plan to kill next, Dragon King? After thinking for a moment, Ji Yushinwei replied, countless. The monk recited a few words in silence again before saying, Old Monk has some words for you. I hope Dragon King can listen to it. Ji Yushinwei nodded slightly. Great evil must be controlled by great wisdom, and great wisdom itself must adhere to great events. Great events, however, must be consolidated by great responsibilities. And which one do you think I lack in, Monk? Ji Yushinwei asked with sarcasm. Great responsibilities, Feiyun answered without hesitation. Seeking revenge itself cannot bear the weight of great responsibility. Compared to Supreme King, your ambitions are too small, Dragon King. So, although you possess great wisdom, you are not able to do great evil. Ji Yushinwei suppressed his emotions and sneered, Supreme King's ambition is to be in possession of more women and try to wrangle a real royal crown if possible. I am indeed inferior compared to him. Feiyun smiled again, then he said, it's all right, as long as you can remember the words of this old monk. Now, when does Dragon King plan to take out the personnel file? It's not with me. Ji Yushinwei said. He knew that the old monk's kung fu was unfathomable and he probably could not gain the upper hand if they really fought so he had given the package wrapped in cotton cloth to made lotus for safekeeping. After looking through the file, it seems very important. Everything that Ji Yushinwei had said so far was just a ploy to probe the monk. However, the monk seemed like he had no experience in negotiation, he did not take precautions against Ji Yushinwei and merely said whatever was on his mind. Well, it's nothing much, actually. The file recorded the names of the kings and nobles of the western region before and after becoming a monk. Imagine if the file was to fall into the hands of people with ulterior motives. 
What if they kidnap some eminent monks from the Four Truths Temple based on the names in the file and use it to threaten all countries? You overestimate it, Dragon King. Whether he was once a king or a beggar, he is but a monk after shaving. But these kings are not monks. How can a son not worry if his father is kidnapped after becoming a monk? Ji Yushenwei was in a slightly better mood once he was back in control of the negotiation. He hoped to see the monk reveal his true colors. That means it was destined for him to experience such a calamity in his life. None of these matters. What does Dragon King want from this old monk in exchange for the personnel file? The monk finally brought up the core matter at hand, so Ji Yushenwei demanded coldly, the Sumeru Mustard Mantra. Dragon King and the Lady are in danger because of the Qigong deviation. This manual of mine does provide some help in relieving the problem. Ji Yushenwei did not speak as he waited for the old monk to make up his mind. However, Feian shook his head unexpectedly. He said, I'm sorry, the old monk cannot use the Sumeru mustard mantra to exchange for the personnel file. Ji Yushenwei stood up and said, It's all right. If I can't exchange it for the divine kung fu, I might as well sell it for a good price. Goodbye, Dragon King. Feian was still unhurried. He said, Old monk has a presumptuous request, however. Is Dragon King able? No Ji Yushenwei refused blatantly. I don't kill people, but people will want to kill me. No one can stop the killing that is going to happen in the Stone Kingdom. Once again, the monk lowered his eyes and recited some sutra under his breath as Ji Yushenwei walked out of the room. He was not in the least bit worried that the monk would divulge the secret meeting. Feian regarded himself as a holy monk and he would never harm a being. Ji Yushenwei's plans were related to the king's life and death, and even if the monk disclosed the secret meeting, he had a way to deal with it. Maid Lotus appeared once Ji Yushenwei left Ningjue Temple. She knew that things had not gone smoothly from the look on Ji Yushenwei's face. So, she offered, how about letting me capture one or two young monks? I can force them to tell us about the secret of the divine kung fu. He shook his head. Just as he approached the city gate, he suddenly realized something and stopped in his tracks return the personnel file to the monk. What? Maid Lotus had always able to quickly discern what he was thinking, but she was caught off guard this time. Return it to the monk, go now. Maid Lotus accepted the order and withdrew. She did not understand his intentions, but as always, she was willing to follow orders unconditionally and would not try to get to the bottom of it. Ji Yushenwei climbed over the city wall and returned to the courier station outside the city. Soon it would be morning, and everything had to be settled by today. But his mind was never free from anxiety. Feian's words only helped to increase the uneasiness within him. He did not understand. Other than wanting to be a king, what other ambitions did Supreme King have? Outside the wall of the courier station, Ji Yushenwei hesitated again, before walking towards the nearby tent campgrounds. Shangguan Ayu did not stay in the courier station like her brother. It seemed as if she had intended to keep a distance with Golden Rock Fort as her tent was located on the edge of the camp. He bypassed two hidden sentries and went to the back of the tent. Suddenly, he did not know why he was here. Then, he picked up a small stone from the ground and threw it at the tent. After a while, Shangguan Ayu walked out of the tent, her eyes slightly swollen. It was unclear whether she had not slept well or she had just cried, but she raised her head slightly and pursed her lips stubbornly into a thin line. Your brother wants to kill you, be careful. Having said that, the burden in Ji Yushenwei's heart felt even heavier. Without waiting for Shangguan Ayu to reply, he quickly retreated, almost startling the hidden sentries nearby. Chapter 345 The Princess Translator, Transan Editor, Transan The news that the princess would be choosing her own husband attracted a lot of bystanders. 
Even if these princes or masters had no hope of winning the favor of the princess, still, they tried all sorts of ways to enter the palace, hoping to catch a glimpse of the princess. Since everybody assumed that the ceremony would not be suspenseful, their attention was solely focused on the princess for the first time. The princess of the Stone Kingdom had recently turned sixteen. She was still an infant when she went into exile with her family in Jade City and had no impression of her homeland. But her two brothers and the wet nurse told her proudly almost every day, you are a princess, and you will marry a king in the future. Having been influenced by their words for many years, the princess grew proud of her identity. She had seen with her own eyes, the tragic scene of the queen mother in exile next door passing on with no one to bury her, and the situation when a group of rough machete men with no ties to the royalty surrounded the just residence and demanded money, but she still believed that she would marry a real king someday. She was even more excited about returning to their motherland than her second brother who was going to inherit the throne. She was, therefore, even more disappointed than her second brother soon after. It turned out that being a princess meant losing her freedom. She was like a caged bird, reduced to a mere commodity for sale, albeit rare and highly prized. On the way back to the kingdom, Prime Minister Yang Do formally informed her, once your highness is of age, you will marry someone from the Yang family. I will personally choose the most suitable husband for the princess. The young princess did not understand. What about a king? Shouldn't she be married to a real king? Why would a minister's son be appointed as her future husband? At that time, the princess was still ignorant of power and its complexities, she even had the audacity to raise her doubts to the prime minister. She would always remember how the old prime minister had laughed contemptuously, dismissing her. There are only about thirty or so kings in the western region, but hundreds of princesses. Do you really think that all of you will marry kings? Ha ha, little girl, soon you will understand that even the Yangs are out of your reach, and you are marrying above your status. Prime Minister Yang Do was correct. She soon realized that both she and the king were mere prey caught in the web woven by the Yangs. They were only kept alive because it was better for the food to remain as fresh as possible. She did not even have a chance to see the residents of her kingdom. The moment she had arrived and alighted from the stifling carriage, she was sent to a cold and narrow residence. She was forbidden from stepping out of the residence, even seeing her royal brother required approval from the prime minister himself. It slowly dawned on her that her only duty was to give birth to a son who could inherit the throne for the Yangs. From then onward, she began to hate the title of princess. It had brought nothing but bad luck to her. Soon, a disaster would befall her. But she could only sit in her tiny room and look on with cold indifference as she waited for the chaos to swallow her. At first, the Kang Kingdom had used violent force to pressure the princess into marrying the Prince of Kang. However, Yang Do had been able to edge out his rival by pretending to be polite and subservient. Next was the Meng family who presented a thick stack of loan receipts and offered to erase all debt and provide one million taels as dowry. The princess could choose any master from the Mengs as her husband. When compared to the Mengs, the wealthiest family in western region, even Yang Do, who was of one of most influential families in Stone Kingdom, was sweating. He could only come up with a series of lies to stall for time. The threat from the Meng family was merely a short interlude, or perhaps, a prelude for what was to come because golden rock forts soon appeared. The Shangguan family had neither the royal blood like prince of the Kang kingdom, nor the wealth of the Meng family. But the killers and secrets placed before him were something that Prime Minister Yang Do could not refuse. It was the secret of how the king had conspired with the prime minister to murder the first prince. No one had actually mentioned any of these to the princess, but every scene of Jade City had run through her mind in those countless hours of solitude. She already knew her eldest brother's cause of death long before the suitor from the Shangguan family appeared on the doorstep of the royal family. Even the crafty Prime Minister Yang Do took the bait. 
The assassination he had planned contained numerous flaws and loopholes, it was nothing more than a child's trick in the eyes of Golden Rock Fort. Despite the incident had occurred many years ago, the evidence was enough to prove who was the instigator at that time. The princess was more than satisfied to see the prime minister weighed down with this. She did not care who she was going to marry. Since the title of a princess was only in name, who could guarantee the authenticity of those kings? Perhaps the supreme king's son was powerful enough and could protect her. However, Dragon King's name suddenly appeared. Chief of the dragons and leader of the Five Peaks, the princess had never heard of such a title before and found it quite laughable. Even Supreme King sounded more like a real title than that. Gradually, rumors about Dragon King spread to the ears of the princess. The giant rock who swallowed human eyeballs, the devil emperor who had killed countless, thousands of rough and barbaric swordsmen from the Great Snow Mountain the person set on revenge and was at loggerheads with Golden Rock Fort. All these rumors led the princess, who had already lost all hope toward her future, to pray sincerely in front of the statue of Buddha that she would not have to marry that wicked man. Buddha must have heard her prayers but did not act on it. Instead, Dragon King was pushed closer and closer to her. In the beginning, Dragon King had shown little promise among all the suitors, yet he had managed to lead with half of the votes and turn the tide around. This result was something that the princess could not have foreseen. It had also caused her to be even more fearful of this man. For the first time in her life, the princess accepted the prime minister's orders willingly. Right now, the choice lies in your highness' hands. Needless to say, I believe the princess should also understand that choosing the ninth young master of the Golden Rock Fort will be the most favorable decision for the Stone Kingdom. The Prime Minister said. She quickly nodded and agreed, although the interests of the Stone Kingdom was not her main priority. She would choose anybody else as long as she did not need to marry Dragon King, along with that horrible big bird which was with him. However, a mysterious woman ruined her mood which she had just calmed down. The woman had been sent by the king's imperial guard and claimed herself to be Xu Yang Wei. She was glib at talking and soon won the trust of the princess. It was only when no one was around that Xu Yang Wei took out a secret letter. The letter was written by her royal brother personally, with only three words, choose Dragon King. But the prime minister, the princess said, her heart was about to shatter. She did not understand why this chaos did not end. Dragon King is a good man. Xu Yang Wei said as she instinctively sensed the princess's fear. She began telling the princess stories about Dragon King, knowing just what to say and what to avoid mentioning. Is he really like what you said? Dragon King. The princess was confused. Dragon King seemed like a deity who was vague and with many sides. Each story seemed to show a completely different side of him. Dragon King is a good man. Said Xu Yang Wei as she nodded solemnly. She used this sentence as her opening and closing remarks. Following that, she went on and talked about the ninth young master of Golden Rock Fort. Xu Yang Wei knew Shang Guan Fei inside out, even better than Dragon King. She said, he's a sinister and timid fellow. You will know it when you see him. His gaze is abnormal, and he got a bad leg. Even if these are not important, you should also know for a fact that he, likes men. The princess did not understand the last sentence. Only after Xu Yang Wei explained it in a roundabout manner, she could not believe her ears. How is it possible? She exclaimed. Ah, your highness is so pure. Xu Yang Wei hugged her shoulders and envied her naivety from the bottom of her heart. The world is far more complicated than you think. It is precise because I have seen many hypocritical men in my life, therefore I know that Dragon King is a good man. However, the princess was not quite convinced. Dragon King had long been a nightmare in her mind that a few words could not easily dispel such thoughts. That giant rock which only eats, don't tell me it's just a rumor to deceive others as well. 
Slightly embarrassed, Xu Yan Wei regretted not coming to see the princess sooner. This was an imaginative princess who had been isolated for so long that she had shaped Dragon King into a mythical demon from legend. She replied, well, that part about the giant rock is true. But it has flown away and has not appeared since. The princess trembled and tears welled up in her eyes upon hearing that, but she fought her urge to cry. Then she spoke with a determined attitude, all right, as long as brother's throne is secured, I will marry anyone that he asks me to. Xu Yang Wei was easily affected by the princess's emotions and her tears started streaming down her face, fate is like that, men are always used by gods to punish women. The only consolation for the princess was that she would be able to get her revenge by publicly humiliating the Prime Minister Yang Do after all these years of imprisonment. Yet, she often couldn't help but think, if only there was a choice, why did the heavens arrange such a narrow path for her, such that even a simple act of moving her fingers was difficult? Therefore, only a tinge of fear flashed her mind when the assassin appeared from nowhere. The huge rock that had been weighing on her mind was lifted, and the princess even smiled as she welcomed the saber about to stab into her chest. At noon, the council chamber in the palace was filled with people. Many men who were not eligible to seek for a marriage were able to enter the palace through all kinds of ways as well. It was said that this was the first ever appearance of the princess after all these years, and would probably be her last appearance as well. However, there was a little dispute in the chamber. The people who had cast their votes to Dragon King surrounded the Prince of the Lulan Kingdom, demanding for their payment. The Prince of the Lulan Kingdom who handed over the problem to Dragon King was already clear-headed by now. He explained in a small voice, you have to ask Dragon King for the money. You cast your vote to him, didn't you? What has it got to do with me? But, said the people surrounding the prince, no one dared to look for Dragon King and ask for the payment. No, you were the one who made the promise that time. You were the one who made us switch our votes to Dragon King on the last day, of course, it's only natural that we come looking for you. Don't tell me you are in cahoots with Dragon King and want to go back on your word after lying to us. Sweat began to trickle from the Lulan Kingdom Prince's forehead. He cursed the special envoy from the Central Plains over a hundred thousands of times in his heart. It was because of Lin Dao fleeing at the last moment which landed him in so much trouble. On the other side of the chamber, Shang Guan Fei spoke to the special envoy from Norland in a low voice. Then, he stood up and pushed through the crowd, making his way to Dragon King's side. The council chamber was crowded but no one was surrounding Dragon King. We will just have to wait for the princess to announce the results. Shang Guan Fei said, smiling knowingly. He had promised Dragon King that he would announce that he had no intention of inheriting the throne once he became the emperor's son-in-law. Ji Yushan Wei nodded slightly. He was clear that Shang Guan Fei had given him an empty promise. Golden rock killers were obviously hidden among the crowd in the council chamber. Even if Ji Yushan Wei closed his eyes, he would be able to sniff them out. What made Ji Yushan Wei uncertain was, were these killers here to protect Shang Guan Fei or to kill him so that they could blame it on Dragon King instead? Translator, Transan Editor, Transan. It was already noon and everything was quiet in the council chamber. Everyone was holding their breath and looking at the gate in the corner, the princess should be walking out from it. Soon, a lady came out and she looked exactly like a goddess, however, her age did not seem quite right as she did not look like a sixteen-year-old girl. Oh, it's you! Shang Guan Fei cried out. He then closed his mouth and looked nervously at Dragon King. Xu Yang Wei lowered her head, appearing to be shy with so many men in front of her, resulting in her bashful actions for a while before she said, Her Highness has caught a cold and has to remain in bed. She can't. There was a great stir in the chamber, Everyone had come to see the princess, and they did not expect to meet a maid. Yang Do was even more perplexed as he rushed to the unknown maid and looked at her coldly, asking, What's going on? 
Madame Yang had always kept the king and princess of Stone Kingdom under her control without encountering any fierce resistance. As such, in the past two years, she had become less watchful but had never expected to make such a careless mistake at the most critical moment. Her Highness is really ill, so she asked me to come out to announce the results. Xu Yang Wei whispered in reply. Yang Do's face recovered a bit of its color. There were too many people behind him, therefore he could not be too blatant and could only stare at the maid with a stern look as he told her, then let's hear what the princess truly wishes for. Who did she choose to be her consort, the ninth young master of Golden Rock Fort or Dragon King? The crowd quieted down again. They could not see the princess, but at least they had to know who the emperor's son-in-law was going to be. More than half of them had cast their gazes on Shangguan Fei. Shangguan Fei did not look like he wanted to be the emperor's son-in-law. He was cowering and had lowered his head, acting like a young man who had never seen the world. Even the special envoy of Norland could not help but frown, thinking that the ninth young master's behavior was ruining the reputation of the Shangguan family. Her Highness has already made a decision. Xu Yang Wei raised his voice slightly as she continued, both the ninth young master and the dragon king are both extraordinary men. Her Highness is honored to receive their favor and said that it was really difficult to choose. The Prince of Ken Kingdom was impatient and cried out loudly, first tell us her decision before you carry on with that crap. Um. Her Highness has thought about it for a long time and in the end, she decided that, the Dragon King is going to be the Emperor's son-in-law. Silence reigned in the council chamber. This result was completely contrary to what they had heard beforehand. Everyone immediately started to think about the causes and the consequences of this result. This is impossible. Prime Minister Yang Do blurted out his words were heard by the whole crowd, causing many people to look at him pitifully. Yang Do's face turned white and he hastily tried to explain his gaffe, Dragon King, don't get me wrong, I mean. How is it possible that the princess is ill? Anne, who the hell are you? How is that I've never seen you before? I am the maid of her highness. If your excellency does not believe me then you can go and ask the princess directly. There must have been an accident. Yang Do's mind was a complete mess. He could always behave in the most appropriate way, but now, he could not come up with anything to salvage the situation. He hurriedly ran out of the corner gate without bothering about how disrespectful leaving his guests alone would be. However, when he was at the entrance, he remembered he had to provide an explanation to Shangguan Fei. Therefore, he turned around and started to look for the ninth young master of Golden Rock Fort, who must have been furious by this time amongst the crowd. Shang Guan Fei had disappeared as immediately after the announcement, he squeezed his way out of the crowd and left from the front gate. This, this, the special envoy of Norland remained speechless for a while before shouting, someone is cheating, let the princess come out. Norland will never accept this result. Ji Yu Shenwei remained indifferent to the news and was keeping a close eye on seven of Golden Rock's killers in the crowd. The killers obviously did not expect this kind of situation to occur. Four of them left with Shang Guan Fei while the other three did not know what to do. They waited for a while before leaving as well. No one tried to approach the Dragon King. The first four killers were Shang Guan Fei's guards. The other three were those who wanted to assassinate Shang Guan Fei. The original plan was for the Dragon King to kill the ninth young master in a rage after losing the race to become the Emperor's son-in-law. It would be the perfect opportunity to frame him, yet unexpectedly, the Dragon King won over the princess's heart and there was no longer any excuse for bloodshed. As such, the three killers did not attack. The crowd was staring at the Dragon King, when suddenly everyone seemed to have simultaneously recalled that they had some important matters to attend to at home and rushed out like a swarm of bees, striving to be the first to leave as if their lives depended upon it. When there were only two people left, Ji Yu Wei asked, how come it was you that came out? The princess really had to remain in bed, but not because of a cold. 
Last night, some assassins appeared. Luckily, she is fine and just scared. Assassins! Ji Yushan Wei cried out in surprise. Shush, you'll know everything about the incident soon, Dragon King. I have to go now. Ji Yushan Wei left the council chamber too as he still had many things to do. Finding out the identity of the assassins who attempted to assassinate the princess was not paramount at the moment. At quarter past noon, dozens of imperial guards appeared at the entrance of the royal palace, all armed with sabers. Interestingly, the guards at the door did not recognize them. The crowd who had come to see the princess poured out of the palace, scattering in every direction. Many of them noticed the frightening imperial guards and believed that something bad was going to happen, thus they began running even faster. One of the king's personal guards appeared at the entrance of the palace and announced the imperial decree loudly, His Majesty has decreed for his son-in-law to enter the palace to have an audience with him. He also summons the newly appointed imperial guards to enter the palace and report to His Majesty. The ten guards at the gate were shocked. Since the current king was Corona Ted, it was the first time they heard him issue a decree, previously, it was always the prime minister who was in charge of matters both within and outside of the royal palace. One of the guards boldly asked, where is the imperial edict? Where is the seal? The imperial guard replied sternly, it's his majesty's order, do you dare to not respect it? Dozens of unidentified guards drew their sabers at the same time and the matter was settled. Ji Yushan Wei had just come out of the palace and nodded to the imperial guard. He was then led by the guard and escorted by He San Tsai and the others who were pretending to be imperial guards into the palace. Along the way, they only encountered some small resistance. After the death of two guards, the other guards discarded their weapons and no one else came to stop them. The eunuchs and court maids bowed their heads to make way for the dragon king and his entourage, daring not to make a sound. They knew that another coup was about to occur. As usual, no one wanted to declare their position before knowing who the final victor would be. The king was anxiously waiting for the arrival of Ji Yushan Wei. There was only a court maid assigned by the dragon king to protect him and he was feeling very uneasy around this female guard named Guan Shong. Upon seeing Dragon King lead a group of fearsome guards in, the king finally managed to allay his worries. Is everything all right? His majesty will see the results very quickly. Soon, Dragon King's words were proven to be true. Prime Minister Yang Do was the first person to be brought in by Maid Lotus. He was powerless like a baby and could not put up any resistance. Seeing the king, he began to regain some confidence. Your Majesty, everything is messed up. This, this, what is all this? Princess, Dragon King, he said. Yang Do, do you know your crime? The king had spoken these words thousands of times in his dreams, but he still felt very emotional now that he had the opportunity to say them in real life. He had been waiting for this moment for too long. No. I don't know what I am guilty of, Yang Do replied, his face turning red. He felt that was the real master of Stone Kingdom and that this king who was already on the decline was just his puppet. Collaborating with the enemy and forcing the king to abdicate, Yang Do, what you have committed is a disgraceful crime worthy of having all your descendants slain, the king replied as he stood on the steps. After every word he uttered, he felt increasingly refreshed. His perennial problem was apparently solved completely. Yang Do was speechless and suddenly turned to Dragon King, it's all your fault, it's your plot. Your Majesty, don't believe him. He, he wants to kill the Ju royal family. Dragon King snorted softly and a dozen bandits disguised as imperial guards pulled out their shining short swords again. The courtyard was immediately filled with a cold and austere air. The king's heart trembled slightly, but he soon regained his calm, save your effort in trying to sow discord, Yang Do, blame yourself for pushing me to a dead end and leaving me without any choice. Facing the threat of the weapons, Yang Do knelt down slowly. 
he did not understand how Dragon King contacted the king. More and more people admitted that Dragon King would be the winner of the coup at the palace and began pledging their loyalty to the king and a few eunuchs brought the imperial seal over. It was a symbol of power that even the king had not touched personally since he began his reign. Most of the imperial guards pleaded guilty and surrendered to the king, while a dozen others fled away. They were all machete men sent by Golden Rock Fort, who, when they heard of Dragon King, stood on the king's side and immediately left the city as fast as possible to look for the ninth young master for protection. Aside from Madam Yang, many important officials also arrived. Many wept bitterly, as it was the first time they had seen the king of their own nation. Ji Yushenwei and the bandits placed by made lotus inside and outside the city attacked simultaneously, capturing almost all of the Yang family in one go and escorting them to the royal palace. When Yang Do saw that even the youngest of his grandson had been arrested, he completely collapsed and implored the king for mercy. Seeing that the more or less everything was under control, the king was now able to manage the situation himself. Ji Yushenwei released half of the people and took the other half with him. He gave the people from Golden Rock Fort an opportunity to leave Stone Kingdom, but he would be unafraid to fight if they chose not to surrender. Residents in the city remained calm and every family kept its door shut. The king's herald held the king's flag up high as he publicly declared the crimes of Madame Yang and that martial law was in effect. The courier station outside the city was another story. The special envoy from Norland and Shangguan Fei hid in a nearby camp belonging to Golden Rock Fort, while all the princes and their attendants retreated to another camp, signifying their neutral stance. There were only more than twenty swordsmen from the Great Snow Mountain who remained in the courier station, with Lin Xiaoshan as their leader. They were prepared for any possible incident. The group from Golden Rock Fort did not flee nor launch any attack. Everything seemed to be happening as per normal for them. Ji Yushenwei observed Golden Rock Fort camp for a while before ordering Li Xiaoshan to enter the city. At the same time, he arranged for some people to send an invitation to the other neutral nations. Most of the princes and tribal chiefs' sons wanted to enter the city as they were concerned about their gold which was currently kept in the imperial palace. As long as it was possible, they were hoping to retrieve the gold they had presented during the competition of wealth a few days ago. It was not until evening when Ji Yushenwei recalled the attack on the princess. It was exactly during this time when Guan Shong sent the assassin over to him. If it was not for Sister Xu, I would have killed her, said Tai Linglong indignantly, she had lost her weapons. Xu Yang Wei prevented her from killing the princess and Guan Shong captured her alive. It was that the assassination, which had been planned for many days, failed. Translator, Transan Editor, Transan Tai Linglong's preparatory work could be considered as very successful for an assassination. She had escaped from the Dragon King's residence on the second day after his departure from Jade City. She disguised herself as a teenage slave and sneaked into a merchant caravan heading to Xiaoyo Lake. She was hiding close to the Dragon King for many days but had never been discovered. She continued to lie low when they had arrived in the Stone Kingdom, and it was during this time that she had gone to the royal palace to conduct some reconnaissance on the princess. As such, she had some preliminary understanding of the daily habits of the princess. If the Dragon King does not manage to marry the princess, I won't have to do anything, she thought. On the day of the actual voting, she knew that the Dragon King would eventually be declared the winner of the entire competition. Therefore, she decided to make her move. The assassination should have been carried out easily, except that it was Xu Yang Wei who tried to protect the princess by leaping in front of her. This gave Tai Linglong a shock and she had no choice but to draw her saber back. Even though it was a very slight pause, it gave Guan Shong, who was standing watch outside, enough time to realize what was happening in the room and rush in. The two women fought all the way out of the room. Tai Linglong was no match for Guan Shong and eventually became her captive. Guan Shong recognized the young girl, 
but she would never have thought that the person who incited Tai Linglong to assassinate the princess would turn out to be Made Lotus, the managing master of the New Moon Hall. Guan Xiong hid the young girl away and lied to the princess that the assassin had escaped. However, she was still uncertain, she could not comprehend the Dragon King's intentions. In the end, it was Xu Yang Wei who proved to be the most understanding, she knew Tai Linglong's character very well too. She must have been acting behind the Dragon King's back again. It's all my fault for having taught her too much nonsensical stuff, she said. This was the second time that Tai Linglong had acted without instructions. The first time was when she sneaked into the Golden Rock Fort with Chu Nanping, and it had forced the Dragon King to be passive. As such, Ji Yu Shenwei could not possibly forgive her again. It did not matter whether she did it out of goodwill or not, it was harmful to his plans. I won't execute you, said Ji Yu Shenwei. He was not angry nor did he castigate her, but his tone was firm and his authority unquestionable. Neither will I forgive you. From now on, you're no longer the personal bodyguard of the Dragon King and a member of the Army of the Great Snow Mountain, he continued. Tai Linglong looked at the Dragon King in surprise. She knew that she would be reprimanded and punished, but had never thought that the consequences were so serious. Ji Yu Shenwei was not done speaking yet. He continued after a pause, return to Shu Like and look for your brother, he'll tell you who your enemy is. You can already get your revenge with the Kung Fu you have now. Never appear before me again unless you believe your machete technique to be better than mine. Tai Linglong's green eyes were welling up with tears as she spoke. Dragon King, I know I've done wrong, but I did it for your own good, in your heart. Then never do anything for my betterment ever again, Ji Yu Shenwei cut her off. I need soldiers who can follow orders and not opinionated little girls. Get out, he continued. Tai Linglong bit her lips. She could not decide whether to be indignant or to plead with the Dragon King. She knew that it was useless to beg him for mercy for he was hard-hearted. As such, she lifted her head and turned around to leave, trying hard to control her impulse to break into tears. After she left, Ji Yu Shenwei turned his attention to Lin Xiaoshan and the other twenty or so swordsmen from the Great Snow Mountain. Tai Linglong is no longer one of us. From now on, all of you are to treat her as you would an enemy if you meet her. Anyone who tries to communicate with her secretly will be executed, he said. All of them bowed and acknowledged the Dragon King's orders. No one dared to try to convince him to go back on his decision, no one remembered the Dragon King ever being convinced. Tai Linglong wandered around aimlessly in the city, having no place to go to and no idea how long she would be walking for. She felt as if something was trapped inside her and missed her saber terribly. She was left empty-handed and felt as defenseless as a lion cub who had been declawed. It was soon night time, and she saw a woman standing in her way. Tai Linglong knew that she would appear sooner or later, and could no longer fight back her tears. The Dragon King doesn't want me around anymore, he has chased me back to Shulike, she said tearfully. Maid Lotus approached her and looked as she continued crying. The Dragon King chased me away in the past too, but you can see for yourself that I'm now back at his side and have won his trust as well, she said. Tai Linglong lifted her head to look at Maid Lotus. The latter's eyes were as obscure as thick smoke and there seemed to be bits of starlight shimmering in its depths. It made Tai Linglong intoxicated, and a desire to worship Maid Lotus grew within her. She had not sold Maid Lotus out to anyone, even the Dragon King. How did you do it? she asked. It was because I perfected some exceptional Kung Fu techniques and am of a comparable skill level with him. He needs me, as I can help him realize his ambitions. But I'm too foolish and could never learn any peerless Kung Fu technique. Even those pills that you gave me. I did not eat them. Maid Lotus laughed sweetly as she replied, the pills are just an aid. You still need to put in the hard work to master any unique set of kung fu techniques. I can put in the hard work, 
I can endure any hardship, replied Tai Linglong, a steely gaze shining from her eyes. Maid Lotus did not point the young girl in the right direction immediately, but gazed at her, as if she wanted to look through her entire body right into the depths of her soul. She then leaned over and whispered some words to Tai Linglong and fished out a piece of jade shaped as a crescent from her clothes. Take it and go to the place which I've just mentioned. There are countless hardships there, and once you've endured all of them, you'll have peerless kung fu skills, she said. Tai Linglong did have some doubts about this arrangement, but somehow she had come to trust Maid Lotus subconsciously, and she was spurred on by the cold-heartedness of the Dragon King. She took the crescent-shaped piece of jade over from Maid Lotus and gripped it tightly in her fist. However, the Dragon King is still going to marry the princess, she said. He won't, I'll take care of it, Maid Lotus said gently with a slight smile. Even so, her authority was as unquestionable as the Dragon King's. At the same time, the King of the Stone Kingdom, who finally had real power in his grasp, was continuously issuing orders to hunt down the remaining members of the young family. As for the Dragon King, he brought the swordsmen from the Great Snow Mountain up to the castle walls and they stood gazing far away at the Golden Rock Fort's camp a few kilometers away from them. It was still all quiet there, they had not retreated nor made any move. It was so quiet that it felt abnormal. As it grew dark, the citizens of the city went to bed early but very few of them could fall asleep. They were all pricking their ears for any sign of unrest and seemed to be able to hear sounds emanating from the royal palace. The king was tired, his health did not allow him to withstand long periods of intense thinking and to handle large amounts of matters of the state. However, he still did not wish to go to bed and remained sitting on his throne in the main hall of the palace, hugging the royal seal closely to his chest. Before today, he had only sat on this throne once, and it was on the day of his coronation. After that, the main hall was sealed off, and all matters of the state were handled in the Prime Minister's mansion and the discussion hall of the royal palace. Finally, the Jew family had regained the throne. He could not recall how many orders he gave during the day, and many of them were pertaining to insignificant matters. Under his request, the servants of the palace were fetching buckets after buckets of clean water to wipe down every spot that the prime minister frequented. The guards had also removed their weapons and tucked them in their waist sashes. The king had an extremely peculiar feeling as he watched his orders being carried out rapidly. He felt that his body was slowing expanding and he was turning into a giant, even the main hall, which was empty now, would not be able to contain him very soon. It was this feeling which made him order everyone out of the main hall and made him sit on the throne till now. It's all mine, he muttered. He felt so emotional that he was nearly cried. When the dragon king walked into this place with a few men, there were only a few candles burning in the huge hall. Without the king's orders, no one dared to make the room better lit. The king looked at the armed man in front of him and hugged the royal seal even more tightly to his chest. A fiery anger grew within him, he had just issued a decree that no one, without being summoned or having announced his or her visit, was to be allowed into the hall. However, in the royal palace, the dragon king had special status. His fearsome machete men, who were more than two hundred strong, remained the biggest armed presence in the city. The royal army was lacking in manpower and unity, they would be no match for a tough adversary. Besides, the dragon king had the ability to kill him any time he wished to. Very quickly, the king's rage turned into fear, and he secretly hid the royal seal in his clothes. He opened his arms to welcome the dragon king, ah, dragon king, the savior of the stone kingdom, my right-hand man. We've succeeded. Are you here to claim the post of prime minister? You're right. This was the deal between us, Ji Yu Shenwei replied. He halted his approach, leaving more than twenty steps between them, he could pick up the concealed hatred from the hunted words of the king. Yes, yes. It's my honor to be able to jointly rule the Stone Kingdom with you, Dragon King. However, I feel that the post of prime minister belittles you 
said the king as his heart raced. He was trying to test the reaction of the Dragon King. I have no intention of becoming the Prime Minister of the Stone Kingdom, replied the Dragon King. His words made the king rejoice, but he was not done speaking. This man, however, would be the ideal choice for Prime Minister, he continued. Shang Hung stepped out from behind the Dragon King and bowed respectfully to the King of the Stone Kingdom. Your Majesty, I hope that you'll be more satisfied with me as compared to Yang Do, he said. Satisfied, I'm extremely satisfied, said the king with an unnatural smile plastered across his face. Once he had got a taste of power, he could not go without it anymore. However, he did not have the strength to rule his kingdom on his own and had to ally himself with someone stronger. I hope the central plane would not mind parting with such a great general, he continued. Ji Yushan Wei did not wish to discuss matters pertaining to the central plane with the king and changed the subject. How does your majesty wish to take care of the Yang family? he asked. The Yang family was large, and there were more than a hundred of them, both sexes included. If he could rule by his own accord, he wished to eliminate every one of them. That said, he was still a little lucid. I'm waiting to discuss this matter with you, Dragon King. They have violated everything that is sacred and should be severely punished, he suggested. My suggestion is to reduce them to the status of ordinary commoners and exile a few important members of the clan. The others can decide whether to stay in the Stone Kingdom or not, the Dragon King replied. His suggestion was implicitly final, but the king could not help but counter it. That's all. We should at least behead Yang Do along with a few of his sons and display their heads for all to see. None of them are good people, he said. The Yang family has ruled the Stone Kingdom for many years and has wide connections. It has secured close relations with many nations in western region, especially in the kingdoms around the Xiaoyao Lake via complicated intermarriages. You'll be isolating the Stone Kingdom by exterminating the entire clan and might even be risking the revenge of the coalition forces. Spare him and let him escape, besides pacifying the other nations, we can also see who amongst them are our true friends. The king's face grew red. The dragon king had just taught him a lesson and it made him feel extremely uneasy. Then let's follow your suggestion, dragon king, he said. His passion had diminished greatly, and even the royal seal had lost much of its appeal. Ji Yushan Wei walked out of the hall, pondering about how he could move his army at the western border of Jade City to the Stone Kingdom, he wanted a solid base for his people where they could grow. It was then, at the entrance of the royal palace, that he bumped into a few swordsmen who were escorting someone who had come looking for him. It was Shang Guanhong, he had not escaped to the Golden Rock Fort's camp, as he knew it was not safe there for him. Congratulations, Dragon King! shouted Shang Guanhong, even when they were still at a distance away from each other. What are you here for? asked Ji Yushan Wei, his eyebrows wrinkled into a frown. You've forgotten, Dragon King. Mr. Zhong left a secret with me. He he, I've said before that I would let you know what it is once the princess has chosen her consort. Ji Yushan Wei had not forgotten about it, but rather he did not pay too much heed to it. He believed that he had seen through the teacher's devious trick, it had to be that he wanted to protect Shang Guanhong. As such, when he took over the kit from Shang Guanhong, he never imagined that it would contain a secret which would turn the situation around. Translator, Transan Editor, Transan. Zhong Ji held an exquisite wine cup in his right hand and gently twirled it around. The thick liquid in it sloshed around with his movements but never spilled out. It always stopped when it had reached the edges, then returned to the center of the cup. To him, wine was the best thing in the world. When he was down, it would give him comfort. And yet, it was also the worst thing in the world, after a hangover, his depression would only intensify. He placed the wine cup on the table and stared at it as if facing off with an enemy. Suddenly, he chuckled softly and shook his head. I've really got nothing better to do, 
to be competing with a cup of wine, he thought. Even if his opponent was a cup of wine, he still emerged the victor. He made up his mind to become teetotal from now on. The time for boredom was over. To counselors like himself, real battles were not fought in taverns or classrooms, they viewed the entire world as a chess game and nations as chess pieces. As for individuals, well, they were but specks of dust on the chess pieces. Slave Juan must already have won the title of Prince Consort by now, Zhong Ji thought. This person is not a speck of dust, nor is he a pawn. He's a disruptor, but he doesn't know what his objectives are, he's unaware even when being made use of. He claimed that he wanted revenge, but revenge? Zhong Ji could not control himself and laughed coldly as he thought about it. What a laughable excuse. Revenge is just like concepts such as love, familial bonds, and wealth, they are just but checkpoints in a man's life journey. It would be too foolish to be too caught up in them. The final destination of that journey would be power. Everything was because of power, for without power, what difference would there be between a man and a walking husk? Zhong Ji thought, as the ambition of his days as a youth welled up in him again. After he finished thinking about Slave Huan, the image of another youth crept into Zhong Ji's mind. This youth was different from the others around him right at a young age. Only he had dared to challenge the Supreme King and question every rule of the stone castle. He would seek clear explanations for everything he had to do, and even when the Supreme King flew into a huge rage, he would be unafraid. Instead, he would explain his actions eloquently. He was a person with his own way of thinking, and such a person would never walk the path paved by others for him, he would rather take a long way round and forge his own path. As such, he wandered into the Jiankou, made friends, fell in love and even mastered difficult kung fu techniques. The only thing he did not like was killing. Zhong Ji was biding his time as the youth was treading his own path in life. He knew that the day would come when the youth would mature and see the light. Then, he would join forces with the teacher to continue on with their life journeys together. The youth was the third young master, Shang Guan Yun. In Zhong Ji's eyes, he was the only one eligible to succeed the mantle of the Supreme King. His other brothers were harmful to the future of the stone castle and should have been gotten rid of earlier, especially that good-for-nothing, Shang Guan Hong. Zhong Ji was satisfied with the cold manner in which he treated Shang Guan Hong. If it were not for the fact that he had sprung the third young master out of prison, Zhong Ji would never have so much as cast an eye on him. It was an extremely long wait and during which he had slowly trained the useless master Hong into a person of some capability. He made use of Shang Guan Hong to plead for the third young master's case to Lady Meng and slowly change her image of Shang Guan Yun thereby planting the seat for her to convince the Supreme King as well. However, the Supreme King, being the Supreme King, saw through the entire plot. Nevertheless, he was not angry and instead, on an afternoon, decided to pay a personal visit to the teacher, he wanted to work together to fulfill both their ambitions. Zhang Ji's thoughts were disrupted as a supervisor wearing a yellow belt came into his room. The supervisor bowed respectfully to the teacher and passed him a letter with both hands. Zhong Ji opened the letter and glanced through it once. Invite the Lord for a visit, he said. The yellow belt retreated with an expression almost bearing on worship. In the entire Golden Rock Fort, and very possibly the entire western region, no one could possibly make the Supreme King move a single step. However, this tall, old man, who was still a stern-looking teacher with a ruler in hand yesterday, had suddenly become the most trusted advisor of the Supreme King overnight. Even those who were most familiar with the internal matters of the fort were left dumbfounded. The Supreme King arrived very quickly. Seeing the still untouched cup of wine on the table, Shangguan Fa broke into a knowing grin as he said, no volume of good wine can fulfill a man's true ambitions. The same goes for women, replied Zhong Ji indifferently, as he bowed slightly. The Supreme King had started preparations to realize his ambition much earlier than the teacher. 
A few years ago, he began getting intimate with women on only a few rare occasions, after conquering countless women during his lifetime, he had finally made up his mind that he would do the job of a true king, conquer the lands and people around him. Is there news already? Zhang Ji nodded and passed the letter to the Supreme King. It was a short letter, and Shang Guan Fa glanced through it once. Everything settled to the north, how about the south, he asked, his face expressionless. The Dragon King will soon realize that he has no other choice. Zhang Ji spread a map open on the table and traced a finger in the northeast direction from Jade City past a sprawling desert and stopped at where the Stone Kingdom was marked. The Dragon King should have already won the title of Prince Consort. If he's smart enough, he won't move against the ninth young master. However, he's separated thousands of kilometers away from the Great Snow Mountain, and once news about the situation from the north reaches him, he'll bash his way across the obstacles in his path to save his own army. When it comes to that, he cannot afford to be merciful. Zhang Ji continued tracing his finger a little to the west of the Stone Kingdom and stopped at its border with the Kang Kingdom. The army of the Kang Kingdom is already waiting at this location. Once the Dragon King leaves the Stone Kingdom, they can move, and we can expect the destruction of the Stone Kingdom to come sometime soon. He then traced his finger northwards across the desert to its other side till where Xuanxuan village was marked. This will be burial ground of the Dragon King, he said. He's stumbled around for so long that it's time for it to end, Shangguan Fa said coldly. It was extremely humiliating for the Supreme King to have a traitor of the Golden Rock fought to muster an army so close to the Jade City and to force him into a peace deal, and he needed a much larger ambition to be able to take it. The Dragon King has his uses, said Zhang Ji in the tone of a tutor subconsciously. If it were not for him vying to become the Prince Consort in the Stone Kingdom and thereby drawing away the attention of the various powers from us, including that of the Central Plain, would the third young master have been able to succeed in the North? My only regret is that his death will come too swiftly for him. Zhang Ji shook his head in disagreement. He felt that the Dragon King was only a disruptor and could not even be considered to be a pawn in their game of chess with the other factions in Western region, there was no need to accord him too much attention. He traced his finger in a northeast direction on the map and stopped at the mountain pass to the east of Jade City. This was where the combined forces of the Central Plain and Shangguan Enyu were stationed at. I estimate that the Lulan Kingdom will descend into chaos after three days. This would force the army of the Central Plain to retreat, and our army can cross the grassy plains of Norland and occupy this spot at the mountain pass in the name of punishing Shangguan Enyu, who has been an unfilial son. We'll then be able to take the provisions and fodder stocked up by the Central Plain over the years for our own use. This will ensure that the Central Plain will not have the ability to move westwards for the next three to five years. The two men swept their gazes across the entire map as if they had each piece of land in their grasp. This was a kind of feeling that even the best wine and the most charming woman in the world could not give them. Zhang Ji drew a large arc with his finger from the mountain pass on the east side of Jade City until it reached the other one on the west side. To its north stood the Xiaoan Kingdom and Norland, while the camp of the Great Snow Mountains stood to its south. In the middle of it all, slightly to the east, was the camp set up by Dugu Xian. Since the third young master has already married the princess of Xiaoan Kingdom, it's only a matter of time before he takes over the throne. Then, the army that we've hidden in that nation can finally be unleashed. Five thousand troops will attack Shangguan Enyu, while another five thousand will merge with Du Guzian's forces. I estimate that we can completely wipe out the entire Snow Mountain Gang within a month at most. The secret army in the Xiaoan Kingdom was the Supreme King's big secret, which he had kept hidden for many years. Within the Golden Rock Fort, only Zhang Ji had managed to guess it correctly from various scraps of leads he had. From there, he had deduced that the Supreme King was still ambitious. The Supreme King's gaze shot westwards to Shu like even before Zhang Ji's finger had moved there. 
It was a huge piece of land, and the Jade City looked like a prison compared to its landmass. The Golden Rock Fort had been caged in this prison for all this while. Shulite can amass an army of at least 50,000, said Shangguan Fa a little worriedly. It was an issue that was still troubling him even though he had discussed many times with Zhong Ji. It was also the hardest part of their plan. Their troops are scattered all over the country, and the largest force it can muster in a single location will only be about seven to 8,000 troops. If the 10,000 cavalry troops supplied by Norland advance quickly enough, Shulike won't have any chance of countering. After Duguzian has exterminated the Snow Mountain Gang, he'll be able to supply more than 10,000 troops. His cavalry will advance through Shulike while his infantry holds down the territory he has won. I guess that within six months to a year's time Shulike will become a part of the Golden Rock Nation. I cannot allow the killers to remain idle in the castle, added Shangguan Fa. They shall create chaos in Shulike, even if they cannot withstand the might of an army, they can make sure it becomes leaderless. Leaderless led both of them to think about the traitor from the Golden Rock Fort who now called himself Chief of the Dragons and Leader of the Five Peaks and they both laughed. Hence, they decided that this would be their plan. There will still some kinks to be straightened out, and even if they managed to conquer Shulike, it would just be the first step to their plan of hegemony. The Central Plain could come with their huge army or Norland could suddenly turn ambitious and think of turning the tables against the Golden Rock Fort, these were things that they had thought about and come up with some preliminary plans against, but they were no cause for too much concern at the moment. The ninth and tenth young masters do not really have to die, said Zhong Ji after a period of silence. He did not mention Shang Guanhong as he knew that the Supreme King did not even consider this unfamiliar youth as his own son. A cold light shone from the deep-set eyes of Shangguan Fa. He had kept his ruthlessness and cruelty hidden for far too long, so much so that the people around him had already forgotten about these two characteristics of him. He felt that it was time to let them wake up. They secretly learned the way list Chigong without my permission and deserve to die, he said. It was what Zhong Ji wanted to hear. He did not care about whether the twins lived or died, but he wanted to be sure that the Supreme King would not come to regret his decision and ask the tutor to pay in the future. Lady Meng would be extremely sad, he said. That lecherous woman, Shang Guan Fa replied, spitting the words out vehemently. I'll let her live before I squeeze all the money from the Meng family. Once news of the death of the twins reaches the fort, let her know immediately. Zhong Ji was satisfied. Although Lady Meng had been foolish at one time, she was not to be taken lightly, and the grand plan for the Golden Rock Fort had only just begun. It could not fail because of her. His gaze still remained fixed on the map, seemingly pondering something. Is there something wrong? asked Shangguan Fa. Zhong Ji pointed to the westernmost part of the Xiaoyao Lake. It was the tiny Hui Kingdom. He traced a meandering path northwards, past the vast, sprawling desert until it reached the western border of Jade City, where it was not far from the camp of the Great Snow Mountain. It was a treacherous route and would require nearly a month to traverse. I'm wondering whether the Dragon King will take the risk to return to his camp by this path instead of by how he came to the Stone Kingdom, he said. Shangguan Fa was pleased to have the opportunity to make his own plans known to Zhong Ji. Slave Huan thinks that his Kung Fu is peerless, but he doesn't know that there are other masters in this world with skills that are beyond his wildest imagination. Rest assured, Mr. Zhong. There are eyes on him. If he returns from the south by where he came, Shengchuan village will be his burial ground. If he advances westwards, he'll meet his end even sooner. There was nothing left for Zhong Ji to worry about. More than a thousand kilometers away, Ji Yu Shenwei was opening the kit brought by Shang Hong to him. There was only a note in it, and on it was written these few words, the third young master has already become king of the Xiaowan kingdom. Translator, Transan Editor, Transan. 
Even though the Golden Rock Fort's camp outside the capital of the Stone Kingdom seemed peaceful, everyone in it was on high alert. They kept their sabers with them at all times and even left them unsheathed and close by so that it would be easier to strike when the time came. The attendants who did not know Kung Fu were even more anxious and most of them went into hiding. They wished that the ground was softer so that they could dig a hole and hide in it. Everyone standing guard at their post was shaking terribly, so much so that it seemed no one would be able to hold a glass of water without spilling its contents out. Shang Guan Fei was seating in his tent. Like the guards, he had drawn his saber, and like the attendants, he was trembling. He was forced to take extraordinary measures as things had gone way south for him and he was in the worst possible situation currently. He watched his remaining servants warily, secretly suspicious that everyone in the world wanted him dead. He had given the order to break camp and begin the journey back to Jade City upon his arrival back from the royal palace, but it was not carried out. Most of the people in the camp remained where they were. It was as if the ninth young master was invisible and his words muted. He came to understand that his failure to become prince consort did not disrupt the Supreme King's plot to kill him and put the blame on the Dragon King. He was well aware that the killers sent to this camp by his father were hiding somewhere nearby and waiting for the prime opportunity to strike. He was in a state of extreme fear but could still think clearly. He knew that it was pointless to flee as many eyes were watching him. He was sure that the arrows would come flying towards him even before he could escape from the camp. Perhaps, the only option available to him could work out. He had already sent out his killers and was waiting for them to come back with good news. It was soon late night, the time when killers loved to roam. The flap of his tent opened, and the figures who stepped in did not belong to those killers he had sent out. Even though they were dressed identically in black and wore masks as well, he could tell them apart at a glance. There were a total of three of them, and they took up different positions around the young master, silently watching him. Shangguan Fei guessed that there were possibly more of them outside the tent. His servant crumpled to the floor as he hugged his head. He even began sobbing softly. Shangguan Fei forced himself to be strong and managed to squeeze out a stiff smile. So, you're moving against me now, he asked. The masked figures did not reply. Killing one's master was inauspicious, even if the order came from the Supreme King. After a while, one of them spoke, Please make a trip with us, ninth young master. Shangguan Fei wanted to ask them where they were bringing him to but quickly came to understand where they would be going. Where else could they bring me? My body has to be found in the city for my death to be blamed on the Dragon King, he thought. I have a solution, said Shangguan Fei. He felt that he could not maintain his composure for much longer and had to speak his mind as soon as he could. You just wish to frame the Dragon King by falsely accusing him of killing someone from the Golden Rock Fort, don't you? There's an even better candidate than me to be the sacrificial lamb, my sister. Why would the Dragon King kill me? He's already become the princess's fiancé, hasn't he? However, he has every reason to kill Shangguan are you? He loves her and even had her soon-to-be husband murdered. Everyone knows that, so. He swept his gaze across the faces of the three killers. He tried to force himself on her and killed her by accident. Isn't it the perfect story? No one can point out a flaw in it, and the Golden Rock Fort can use it to stop the ceasefire as planned, thereby being able to launch an attack on the Great Snow Mountain again, he suggested. An eager look was plastered all over his face making him look like a child who had cleaned up his room on his own accord and who was excitedly telling his parents about his accomplishment. However, the masked figures were not his parents, and they remained unmoved. Shangguan Fei grew a little anxious as he continued, there's no benefit to be gained from killing me, once the Lord comes to his senses, he'll regret it and come looking for those that killed me. Besides, my mother would never let my murderer off. The three masked figures remained silent, but finally, they seemed to be convinced and retreated out of the tent. 
Shangguan and Fei let out a breath of air heavily. He felt that his legs had become as soft as jelly and he needed to sit down. Another person came walking into his tent, and Shangguan and Fei looked as if he had seen a ghost. He immediately stood up again, as if he had sat on a bed of pins. You, what are you doing here? he asked. Shangguan Ayu looked at her brother, a mixture of pity, disappointment, anger, doubt and detachment, feelings which she could not explain, churning within her heart. You don't even have the courage to kill me yourself, do you? she questioned. Shangguan Fei's first reaction was denial, but could not find his tongue just as his mouth was open halfway. The three masked figures were not his executioners and possibly were not even killers. To begin with, it was a ploy by his sister to get him to speak. He was ashamed and angry at the same time. He stared at his sister for a while before sobbing just like the slave paralyzed on the floor. I've no choice, little sister. I've no choice. I'm afraid, too afraid. I don't understand why father would want to kill me. Forgive me. Besides, it was not my idea to kill you. It was mother. Yes, her. She requested for you to follow me. She didn't say it explicitly, but. Shangguan Ayu did not need her brother to explain in detail. After receiving the Dragon King's warning, she understood the entire conspiracy, she sent people to test her brother because she wanted to hear his confession at first hand. Other than their mother, no one else could force her to come to the Stone Kingdom. In truth, she could not help her brother in any manner in his quest to become the prince consort, her only usefulness was that she could take her brother's place as the sacrificial lamb. This was the reality of life in the stone castle, siblings would kill each other and the sole survivor would take over the mantle of the supreme king. She had seen through all of it a long time ago, but when this harsh reality was to be applied to her own life, she still could not help but feel a heart-wrenching pain inside. Do you think that father would let you off just by acting in this way? She asked softly. She felt her own hatred for her brother slowly dissipating, he was the weakling of the fort, and everything he did was nearly never of his own accord. I? I don't know, said Shangguan Fei blankly, he had stopped crying. He never dared to consider this possibility. Mother, she would save me. If she had the ability to save you, she would not have risked sending you here in the first place. Don't you get it? She's lost the favor of our father, and she no longer has the right to speak to him. Shangguan Fei shook his head violently, unwilling to admit this obvious truth. Never, never, mother would never lose the favor of father, he likes her so much. His voice diminished until it almost disappeared. He was extremely clear that in the stone castle, nothing was forever, other than the stones. What should we do now? Shangguan Fei asked. It was like when they were young, and he would blurt out the question to his sister without thinking. Escape, Shangguan Ayu replied. She was composed in front of her brother, it was pointless to be grieving or angry. He was of the same blood as her, and even if he was a scheming brother, she had to save him. How can we escape? Father's killers are lying in wait outside, he replied. He regretted coming back to the camp, but knew that it was equally unsafe to remain in the capital, after all, it had already become the territory of the Dragon King. Someone outside the tent said softly, we can make a move now, tenth young master. Shangguan Ayu turned and left the tent. Shangguan Fei hesitated for a while before following suit and he turned to look at the trembling servant still lying on the floor when he reached the entrance of the tent. You can leave with me, he said. The servant remained trembling and did not reply. He seemed to have been shocked out of his senses and did not even lift his head up. Shangguan Fei did not pay any heed to him again. The chilly wind blowing outside the tent was starting to turn warm, and the endless night sky was filled with countless stars. Shangguan Fei could not help but shiver a little and followed closely behind his sister. He disliked darkness, especially when it was pitch black. 
The three masked figures bowed to Shangguan Ayu as a show of respect and retreated backward. Soon, they had disappeared amongst the tents. Why have they left? Shangguan Fei asked in a trembling voice. He wished to have as many people with him as possible at this juncture. They're killers, and cannot leave with traitors against the Lord. I still have killers, they. Shangguan Fei suddenly remembered that he had sent his killers to assassinate his sister, but they had never returned. They could not find their target and have decided to not get involved any further in this matter. They're never coming back to see you, she replied. Shangguan Fei had spent much effort in stirring up some courage within himself, but it was gone with the wind now. He had thought that his sister had some cunning plan up her sleeve, but it turned out to be just for the two of them to bash their way out of the camp. He wanted to return to his tent, where there was light. At least, if he was there, he could temporarily distance himself from the darkness outside. Let's go, follow my lead, Shangguan Ayu said as she drew her weapon from its scabbard. It turned out to be a wooden saber. Shangguan Fei's faith in his sister was diminishing by the seconds, she could not even bring herself to kill. However, his feet moved of their own accord, and they gradually brought him further away from the brightly lit tent. Rather than feeling afraid myself, why not entrust my life to someone stronger, he thought. It was this thought that made him cast away all his doubts and follow closely behind his sister. Shangguan Ayu was not sneaking out, but walking boldly and openly out of the camp. No one came to stop them, it was as if everyone in the camp had gone missing all of a sudden. Despite that, Shangguan Fei did not feel secure at all. He knew that many murderous killers were waiting for him in the dark. When they were a few dozen steps away from the gate of the camp, his nightmare came true. A few black figures dashed out from behind their tents and came rushing at the siblings from various directions. Shangguan Ayu struck her saber at her opponents. She made a sudden change of direction just as she began moving, and her saber hit the shoulder of the opponent on her left. Even though it did not have much killing power, it still knocked her opponent away. Her feet did not stop moving, as she leaped around the tents. It was as if she was playing in the stone castle when she was young. Her lightness skills were top-notch and she made frequent changes in direction, but Shangguan Fei managed to keep up. In a bid to ensure his own survival, he had stimulated all of his hidden potential in lightness skills. Shangguan Ayu did not seem to have a well-defined escape route and seemed to be probing different spots of the camp. Shangguan Fei soon caught on to her, she wanted to flush out all of the hidden killers. Not everyone in the camp had received orders to kill the twins, less than twenty killers were trying to hem them in. The others remained hidden in their tents, contented to watch how things would unfold. The killers chased closely after the twins, and after circling twice around the camp, there was finally a breach in their ranks. The siblings took their chance and rushed out of the camp. Shangguan Ayu had already prepared two good horses beforehand, and the twins leaped onto their mount and spurred them into a gallop. The killers behind them were still chasing after them but did not seem to be putting too much effort into it. Shangguan Fei suddenly realized that they were riding towards the capital of the Stone Kingdom. We cannot enter the city, shouted Shangguan Fei. He dared not reduce speed for fear of losing his sister. It's exactly what father wants, for us to die near the Dragon King. Shangguan Ayu did not reply, but she knew very clearly that under such circumstances, the Dragon King was very possibly the only person who did not want the twins dead. As they neared the capital, its gate was suddenly flung open, but it was not to welcome the twins. A column of people came riding quickly out of the gate, and its leader was the Dragon King himself. Neither of the siblings knew that their third brother had already become the prince consort of the Xiaoan kingdom and that in reality, a war had already begun between the Golden Rock Fort and the Great Snow Mountain. A large-scale riot of unknown cause broke out in the Golden Rock Fort's camp late in the night. The shouting lasted for about two hours, and the citizens in the surrounding area could hear them clearly, 
but none of them dared to venture forth to witness the commotion that night. Early on the next morning, some curious citizens finally plucked up their courage and headed for the campsite, hoping to find out what had happened last night. However, they only found it deserted when they arrived there. Dozens of corpses were left behind, and they all belonged to defenseless slaves in the camp. The killers and machete men had broken camp in a haste and left behind a large number of valuable items, to the benefit of the local good-for-nothings. Very soon, citizens from the surrounding area, regardless of age or gender, were hurrying over to get their share of the spoils. When the soldiers from the city arrived at the scene, even most of the corpses had been stripped of their clothing. Most people heard a whisper that it was the Dragon King who had killed the children of the Supreme King and sparked the panic within the camp last night, but another rumor had it that it was the killers of the Golden Rock Fort who had secretly executed their own young master and killed their slaves to conceal the truth. No matter what it was, everyone believed the Shangguan twins to be dead by now, and that the Great Snow Mountain and the Golden Rock Fort had renewed their war with each other. As for the Stone Kingdom, now it had no choice but to join the side of the Great Snow Mountain. In fact, both the twins and Shangguan Hong were still very much alive and hiding in the city. Ji Yushenwei was still undecided on how to handle them, there had been too many unexpected accidents lately which disrupted his plans. The first surprise for him was Zhong Ji. He racked his brain but still failed to figure out how did the tutor, who had obscured his talents for so many years in the fort, get to take part in such a secretive mission and even set him up. The second person who surprised him was the third young master, Shang Guan Yun. The last time Ji Yushen Wei had met him, he was imprisoned in the dungeon, and even attempted to take his father's life. Why had his fortunes reversed all of a sudden, and why was he the only child still favored by the Supreme King? He was even representing the Golden Rock Fort in the Xiaoan Kingdom, Ji Yushen Wei thought perplexedly. The note from Zhong Ji, which had been passed to him via Shang Guan Hong, had already given an obvious hint that no matter how the Dragon King handled the twins, the Golden Rock Fort would come up with an excuse to renew its war with the Great Snow Mountain. As such, his best option was still to kill the three siblings to fulfill his vow of revenge against the entire Shangguan family. His hatred was thus being used against him. Even though it was a critical moment for him, Ji Yushen Wei still decided to use some of his precious time on a visit to Ningjue Temple. He wanted to pay Master Feian a visit, he did not like the monk but he needed the monk's advice. He wanted to have a clear picture of how big the ambition of the Supreme King actually was. I'm extremely grateful for your returning of the personnel file, Dragon King, said Feiyan. He knew nothing about the happenings of the past two days, and his expression was still as sorrowful as before. Ji Yushen Wei had just paid a heavy price for underestimating his opponent, and did not want to make the same mistake again. Therefore his attitude toward the monk had become extremely sincere now. The personnel file belongs to this fine temple, and it's only right for it to return to its original owner, he said. Feiyan nodded with a smile on his face but did not reply, Ji Yushen Wei remained silent as well. They faced each other in this manner for about thirty minutes before the monk finally broke the silence. The monk somehow knew what Ji Yushen Wei wanted to know without evening talking to him and explained explicitly, there are two mountain passes outside Jade City. The one in the west leads to Shulike, and the other one in the south to the Xiaoyao Lake. Once the Golden Rock Fort captures these two places, half of the territories in western region will belong to the Shangguan family. With such a large piece of land, the Golden Rock Fort will rise to become a power worthy of comparison with the other big nations. Finally, he could sort through the mess of thoughts in his mind and fish out some leads from them. He had made a mistake which nearly no one could have avoided, that of overconfidence. He had thought of himself as the biggest opponent of his enemy. When in fact, to both Zhong Ji and the Supreme King, he was just a killer who did not know his place and who was causing a nuisance far away from the heart of the Golden Rock Fort. 
Shang Guan Efei's reaction had been weak thus far because he had greater ambitions in mind and was not willing to reveal his true strength at such an early stage. Ji Yu Shenwei had always thought of the Golden Rock Fort as a huge, immovable force, but it was, in fact, more like a sleeping beast, although frequently caught napping, it would not be willing to be continually attacked without fighting back, and when it did, it could easily tear the instigator to shreds. As Ji Yu Shenwei was getting ready to take his leave, Fei'an said, I hope that you can bring that lady over for a visit before you leave, Dragon King. Ji Yu Shenwei bowed and acknowledged the monk's request before walking into the royal palace directly from a side gate of Ningjue Temple. The three Shangguan siblings were facing each other silently in an isolated room, they had not spoken to each other since meeting. Ji Yu Shenwei faced them as he spoke. I want to bring all three of you back to Jade City. Since everyone says that I've killed you, I want to show them that all of you are alive. Shang Guan Ayu cast her gaze sideways and her twin brother let out a sigh of relief slowly. Only Shang Guan Hong replied, What's the point? I estimate that most of the people from the Great Snow Mountain would already be dead by the time we arrive back at Jade City. If you're asking me, why not let's do it this way? Let me go, and I shall sneak back and tell everyone they're the truth. This might still allow us to salvage the situation. Shang Guan Hong was still under the impression that Zhong Ji wanted him to pass the kit to the Dragon King as the tutor had some cunning plan to save him. As such, he preferred not to be seen working together with the Dragon King. Ji Yu Shenwei looked at Master Hong, who was completely unaware that he was being made use of. He despised Shang Guan Hong's foolishness and yet could empathize with him at the same time. You're just like the two of them, wanted by the Supreme King. If I let you go, you'll be killed even before walking out of the desert. Shang Guan Hong laughed dryly and did not really believe the Dragon King's words. I'm just a scapegoat. If the ninth young master survives, I'll be targeted, but if everyone believes him to be dead, naturally I would be fine. The Lord has no reason to kill me now, and he may not even know that I'm still alive. Have you divulged that secret to Zhong Ji? The expression of Shang Guan Hong changed as Ji Yu Shenwei's question took him by surprise. He quickly glanced at the twins before replying, What are we talking about this for? Er, Zhong Ji, he knows everything, nobody can fool him. In this way, the Supreme King knows about it too. And it's because of this secret that he wants all of you dead. Shang Guan Hong was agape with shock. He did not understand the intentions of the Dragon King. Impossible, impossible, how could Zhong Ji even get an audience with the Lord, he asked. Comparably, the twins were in even greater shock, especially Shang Guan Fei. He still could not figure out why his father intended to kill him, and could not think of any other reason other than his own cowardice nor did he dare to ask. He leaped up from his seat the moment he heard that it could be linked to Shang Guan Hong. It's you. What secret is it? Why? You've offended father, haven't you? But how could it have links to me, he questioned. Shang Guan Hong had no counter for Shang Guan Fei's continuous stream of questions and hurriedly waved his hand, replying, Don't spout nonsense, the Dragon Kings, trying to drive a wedge between us. Don't believe him. I'm trying to drive a wedge between you three, Ji Yu Shenwei countered coldly. He took out the note from Zhong Ji and showed it to the three Shangguan siblings. Third brother. Shangguan are you asked. She was confused, when they had set off from Jade City, Shangguan Yun was still imprisoned in the dungeon, and there were no signs of any impending release for him. The Xiaowan Kingdom. Shang Guan Fei was even more bewildered than his sister. When did father take an interest in the Xiaowan Kingdom? He continued asking. Third young master. Zhong Ji, Shang Guan Hong said, particularly unable to fathom the tutor's intentions. Ji Yu Shenwei had no other direct evidence besides the note, but he could already deduce most of the conspiracy from the facts laid out in front of him. This is Zhongji's cunning plot, the person he really hopes to assist is Shang Guan Yun, 
supporting Shangguan Hong was just a way of getting Shangguan Yun out of the dungeon, am I right? The twins knew nothing about this and did not even understand what the Dragon King meant by saying Zhong Ji had supported Shangguan Hong. As such, they turned to their half-brother, who was turning paler by the minute. Yes, yes, but Zhong Ji said that only by releasing Shangguan Yun, would the various powers in the fort balance out and that this would be beneficial to me. How could it? Shangguan Fei flew into a rage and rushed up to Shangguan Hong, saying, so you've been harboring a plot all this while. How could I not have seen through it? To think that I even treated you as a confidant. Shangguan Hong's face turned from pale white to peach red as he stood up as well. Confidant? I'm your elder brother, not your most trusted slave from the stone castle, he exclaimed. Both of them stared angrily at each other, seemingly about to come to blows at any instant. Ji Yushenwei had to forcibly suppress his urge to kill both of them as he mocked coldly, don't be hasty. When the Supreme King hears the news that any of you are still alive, he'll send killers after you three. Upon hearing that, the two half-brothers returned to their respective seats, still angry with each other. Shang Guan Fei continued to question his elder half-brother in the tone of a master addressing his slave, speak, what secret does Zhong Ji tell to our father? Why did it cause father to be so angry that he would want even me and my sister dead? Shang Guan Hong turned his head away and his lips remained tightly sealed. His face, though, was as red as when he spoke to Shang Guan Fei earlier. Stop asking, interrupted Shang Guan Are you? She had been living in the inner residence and could roughly guess what Shang Guan Hong's secret was. The end result will be the same even if we know what it is, she continued. No. I want to know what it is, replied Shangguan Fei. Even though he was cowardly, he was not afraid of Shangguan Hong and was determined to find out the truth. Shangguan Hong continued ignoring him and turned to the Dragon King, did Zhong Ji really divulge the secret to the Lord? Think about it. First, he made use of you and Lady Meng to get Shangguan Yun out. Next, he would have to get rid of potential challenges for Shangguan Yun, and what better way to do that than leverage on your secret? You should have understood this the moment you knew the Supreme King wanted all three of you dead. Shangguan Hong grew even redder. It was not that he did not have his suspicions, but he could not believe that Zhong Ji could have betrayed him. Now that it was already a fact that the third young master had become the prince consort of Xiaoan kingdom and obviously the heir apparent of the supreme king, what further use could he, an illegitimate son, be of? How could this be, said Shang Hong, irritated. He was restless and tried to speak a few times but ended up holding himself back. Is there a need to tell them, he finally asked. What secret is it exactly, Shang Fei asked. He was close to flying into a violent rage, which was something rare for him. They'll get to know it sooner or later. Since all of you are on the same boat now, it's best to be honest with each other, said Ji Yushan Wei. Then you, you tell them since you know everything, replied Shang Guan Hong as he hung his head. He had still not recovered from the blow of Zhong Ji's betrayal. Shang Guan Ayu's expression had turned samba and once had wanted to leave before returning to her seat again. She hung her head as well. Only Shang Guan Fei was waiting impatiently for the Dragon King to divulge the secret. Most importantly, he wanted to know whether there was any way to salvage his diminished reputation in the eyes of his father. Shang Guan Hong had an affair with Lady Meng, said Ji Yushan Wei bluntly. He had known about this secret long ago but did not expect for it to become a deadly weapon in Zhong Ji's hands. In the past, the deadliest weapon was a counselor, recalled Ji Yushan Wei as he thought about his previous discussions with the tutor. Now, this old but deadly weapon was about to be unsheathed again. Shang Guan Fei was stunned. He did not seem to understand the Dragon King's words and furrowed his eyebrows together like a confused student trying hard to process new information. He turned his head and carefully took a measure of the uneasy and bashful Shang Guan Hong. Suddenly, 
he drew his saber and rushed toward his elder half-brother with only murder on his mind. His speed was so great that not only was Shang Guan Hong unable to counter, even Ji Yushun Wei felt that it was hard for him to interfere.